All right, I feel like a uh, kid on Christmas right now. I barely got it installed in time for this live stream. I will be completely honest. Welcome in, Proto Man, and um, yeah. Uh, just let me know if the sound is working before I go further, and if the text is showing up on screen because it's not showing up on my little chat screen. Also, I need to mute myself. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why my little chat didn't show up. Hey, Arish, how are you doing, man? Um, all right, so I uh, did not expect this to come out today, so I didn't prepare anything for this. Shows you how behind on the news I am while I'm preparing for stuff. So, um, hi, everyone. I'm Two Neurons. Welcome to the Epic Launcher. If you don't know, you've clicked on the stream for some reason you should know by now ue5 preview is out it is installed on my system i'm currently downloading in the background here so let me move my picture out of the let me grab the right thing before i try to move stuff um as you can see i'm downloading the preview for the system i'm also going to just hide my taskbar so we can just enjoy a full view of the editor um all right, so I have not opened this yet. And this will be my first time opening the system. Uh, hey there, Bow Chicka Wow Wow, Jamie. Uh, yeah, that's actually due to the RTS. Sorry, not the RTS. That's due to the survival tutorial series. Uh, UE5 coming out today and early access has made it so that I'm going to launch that. And welcome in from Hamburg. All right. Um, so, yeah, I feel like... Um, uh, a fat kid in a candy store right now. I'm, I'm panting heavily for some reason. I think I'm a little bit anxious about doing a live stream because I haven't done one of these as a tutorial in a while. And to be fair, I have not opened the engine yet. I have not looked at Unreal 5 yet. I've read the documentation. I've looked at all the stuff leading up to this. So we're going to do this together. Hiding porn. I mean, I'll show you what I'm hiding. Literally just the icon for Unreal 5. Um... Actually, I am hiding some stuff, but it isn't porn. It's more like my work stuff that's confidential. But that's on my other monitor. Yes, this does mean I will be doing UE5 tutorials. All right. All right. Moment of, of, of uh, well, I'm not sure moment of what. I'm just going to click the, the thing and let's see what we got. Sir Manfred, welcome in and welcome in from Sweden. All right. Let's create this launches. Okay. Ooh, I have a crash already. That is lovely. Let's give access to it. Let's send and restart. Please work. <laughs> it literally finished 30 seconds before I went live, by the way. Okay. The launch is restarting. I'm having a little bit of a heart attack here. Let's go to the library. Valley of the uh, Ancients is still downloading. Let's launch that one more time. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that's actually kind of pretty. I like that. <laughs> he downloaded. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Okay, so um, first thing I've noticed is it's letting me update projects as far back as 4.22. All right, so I, I'm not going to update anything yet. We will do that later in the stream. Welcome in, Bullfrog. What we're going to do is I'm, I actually am recording this at the same time just so I can make edits and, and trim things down. Um, what I plan to do is I'm going to walk us through the new editor. And then I'm going to look at Valleys of the Ancient, which is the project that Epic has put out to, sh to show off the engine. And then we're going to try to update a project. Yes, there are a lot of changes. We will be talking about those changes in this stream today. So... We are going to spend a lot of time just walking through all the new UI stuff and all the new features. So this is going to be a bit of a longer, more rambly stream than my normal tutorials. Also, because I've not opened this up yet. No, Ada, you're not late. Um, we're going to be walking us through the new editor and everything. So let's first start with this new menu. Clearly, we have our recent projects. We, we have our normal stuff here. Hey, there's a marketplace link. I'm not sure how I feel about that. So if we want to make games, we have our similar setup as before with Blueprint and C++ with our ray tracing option just like before. 
Doesn't look like, oh, we have a virtual reality one. I like the AR one there, which is automatically blueprint only. What about virtual reality? Just starter content choice. Doesn't even tell you if it's blueprint or, un, or uh, C++. So again, blank, we have blueprint C++. We have our stroke desktop choice. We have our settings. We have our starter content, ray tracing choices. C++, uh, sorry, uh, first person, same choices here. Let's see our puzzle, again, same choices, third person. I'm assuming all of these outside of the AR and VR will be, yep. VR, no idea what we're getting with this. And uh, our advanced vehicle has the same settings. All right, I care more about the game side of it, but we will look at the film. So our film has the same usual starter content. Ooh, and they actually have an camera VFX one. For our ArcViz folks and oh, HoloLens people as well. I'm not sure what collab viewer is. It looks like it's for desktop VR. We have different settings. And uh, automotive, we have collab HoloLens photo studio. So yeah, it's all fairly similar to before, except for it is, we're having, we have more options under our film, architect, engineering, and automotive than we did previously. Um, so, yep, let's take a look at a new project. We're gonna create a blank project for this. We're gonna go to games. We will, we'll use first person shooter just, just to see what they have built in already for us. And uh, let's just ignore that. And let's go to uh, my, that's for tutorial stuff. I know I put a UE5, there we go. Even though technically it's not epic. Um, YT UE5 preview. We will have ray tracing on. We will do C++ just so we can see how it looks with our uh, Visual Studio setup. Oh dear God, I'm probably gonna have problems with Visual Studio. But let's, and let's pray to God this doesn't crash. Jamie, this is a good time to come in and start learning this stuff if you're interested in games design or anything using ArcViz or anything like that. All right, let's see this generate code. I'm doing this from an SSD, by the way. Actually, technically I'm doing it from an uh, M.2. So um, note this is installing on an M.2. It is still taking a bit of time. Um, sounds like a liveness for me. Do you not understand life, Chica? I don't know why the chat isn't showing up on the screen. I have set it up so we could see the chat, but for some reason, it seems to be glitching out. Also, I'm gonna move this damn thing off the screen. For those of you who don't know that is, it's my fan settings from Asus on the motherboard. Come on, finish generating the code. Generate the code! So yeah, welcome in everybody. We are... Can you see? Hey, I'm reconnected. Um, hopefully, I'm... All right, it says it's... I am going to be editing the recording so it can go up properly. Also... Just in case anybody from Virgin Media in the UK is watching, your service is crap. The fact you claim that I can use whatever modem I want or whatever I router I want is also a bold face lie. Find me one modern modem. Find me one modern modem that uses that uses a coax input find me one find me one virgin and i will agree that i don't have to use your crappy crappy hardware All right, I'm not sure if I'm still connected or not because it's saying it's connected, but I am not seeing anything on my side here. I am just going to go in here and I am going to uh, find Valley or Valley apparently. And I am going to pause that. So it looks like I'm back. Um, I, 
honestly, a potato would be goddamn better. Part of my language. Uh, my, my, um, yeah. A potato would be better. But hey, the engine just launched. Here we are. Here is our lovely, lovely new engine. Um, I have paused the valley recording in the background. Um, and hey, I can see that it looks like it's not freezing this time. So I have no idea why my ISP is being utter, utter horse hockey. Okay, so uh, for the Americans out there, I prefer um, Comcast to Virgin. That is how bad Virgin is. I am putting that in the chat just in case I drop again. All right, it looks like I haven't dropped. So let's take a look at the new editor. Oh, I'm having like heart palpitations over this. Um, I am going to just refresh the stream one more time on my own end to make sure I haven't frozen. And then we're going to take a look at this new, I like the dark look by the way, this new, new editor. Um, watch another DDoS happen in a moment. Yeah. All right. So by the way, we have that little pop-up down there about the content drawer, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. So as you can see, we have this new updated look, this much darker look. We have our usual content, create, blueprint, cinematics tools. Ooh, we have the VR tool. We have our save floppy disk thing there. Um, all right. So let's see, let's see, let's take a look at our content drawer. Let's just hit our control space. And there is our content drawer, which is currently not docked. Right here, see? So once I click on the map, it goes away. Let's just take one moment and take a look at our actual game world. Oh, Jesus. It is chugging, by the way, to get this thing to load. Wow. Okay. That 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 is um <laughs> that that is uh, not not um not not useful. Yeah, that that uh <laughs> okay. Take from that what you will. Yeah, it's not promising. I think that that's the word I'm going to use. Um, she froze again. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean early access? Uh, okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, that, that happened. <laughs> Okay, so, um, batteries not included. We'll try that one more time just to see what happens. By the way, for anyone who doesn't know, I am running on an RTX card on a, on a 3070, so hopefully this shouldn't cause too many problems. I do like the new icon for uh, the text there. It's much easier to click the billboard. The billboards stand out a bit more. So there's our, our light source, there's our reflective cube, there are our clouds. I still don't like how pixelated the clouds are, but we'll talk about that later on. Um, so again, we have our hotkey of control spacebar, and we can dock this in our layout. And so we now have our old sort of UE4 layout with all the little lovely things here. We have our world outliner just like before. I'm not sure why it says I have two objects selected. Okay. So again, we have our world outliner where we can set our mesh, we can set our material, and we have what looks to be our same sort of physics and everything else we have. Yep. So everything else. Oh, there's a little bit more choice on the virtual textures than before, which unless you're doing uh, VFX, don't worry about it that much. Um, oh, I just had a terrible thought. Everyone is always on Bethesda to change their engine. They will make an early access one. Oh God. Oh God. All right. Let, let's try this one more time and let's hope I don't crash. It's going to crash. It's going to crash. 
Yep. Uh, I can't even get the engine to properly, uh, load in anything. Alright, that's enough of that. Oh, he stopped, okay. So, yeah, uh, that's happened. Welcome in, Alexis. Um... I wonder if it is because it's an ROTS uh, project. Time to stop the stream, folks. Uh, so, I guess, um, yeah, I will I will create another project without RTX and see what happens. But before we do that, let's actually take a look at this. Okay, so one thing to note is it doesn't save the layout. So let's just put that back into there. And now let's take a proper look at everything. So again, to get the layout on, to get the content panel back up, it is control space bar. Um, oh, yeah, the shaders are still compiling. Thank you. I didn't notice that. So, hey, we had the shaders still compiling. So let's consider, we'll take a look at other things and we'll test it once that hits 100%. Sorry, I'm used to there being a pop-up. Also, my mic, by the way, you know, you can see it in front of my face. It's actually blocking that corner of the screen. I had to lean up to see that that was happening. Um... Maybe to try it with Blueprint if it keeps crashing. That will be the other thing we'll do. We'll try it with Blueprint. Blah, 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 blah. We'll try it with Blueprints. And we'll try it with um, the ray tracing turned off. But before we do that, sorry, that wasn't the engine crashing. That was me moving my tabs around so I can talk about stuff. We have our content browsers more easily accessible. So we can open up multiple content browsers just like before. And you can't see this, but I am able to move it off screen. It is on my other. Oh, God. Okay. Um, by the way, doing that caused everything on my other screen to suddenly minimize. So, hey. Yeah. So, again, we have access to multiple content browsers. We are limited to four. Um, what is a focus content browser? Let's focus the most recently active content browser. Okay. So, if I click, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up three of these. And there's number three. I'm just going to go into the first person CP here. And then I'm going to just... Go there for a moment, and then I'm going to click the focus. I'm not sure if that did anything. Okay, so it's supposed to bring one of these back up, I guess. But, um, yeah, so th there's that. We have, I'm not going to hit the play button if I'm very careful about this. We have, again, we have our preview mode for mobile included, our new window, our VR, our standalone, and our simulate. We have our multiplayer setup. For testing as a standalone game, as a listen, as a dedicated server or listen server, and server as host model. For those of you not familiar with replication, I do recommend checking out my friend's channel, which I'll post a link to later on. And we have our number of players. Okay, let's take a look really quickly. We will we'll get to the. Um, I'm not sure how to turn it, arrow shake in, in this thing. We will get to, um, I don't have that issue with UE4, oddly enough. Um, we will get to the Blueprint UI, but let's just take a look at what we have here. We have our crate, so that panel that used to be over here in UE4. I like how this is more, honestly, this seems more accessible to me. So we have our usual lights, our directional point spot, no new lights. We have our usual BPS shapes, our cinematic tools. Let's see, we have our sky atmosphere. I'm kind of curious, actually, what sky we're using. We're using the sky sphere blueprint still in here. So I'm going to just delete the sky. Wow, there's a, I will say this is lagging a little bit. We're going to delete our sky sphere. There we go. And I'm just going to make sure we don't have any other, we have our skylight in place. Let's just add in our, uh, ba ba ba. Sky atmosphere. There we go. Uh, we will get rid of the atmospheric fog. For those of you who are not aware, your sky uh, sphere automatically takes care of um, our 
uh, atmospheric fog. For those of you who want my PC specs, give me one second and I will just read out to you my parts list real quick. I am running on a, by the way, welcome in Hari or Harry. I am running on an AMD Ryzen 9 3090X, a Asus ROG Crosshair 8 with 32 gigs, of, sorry, not 32 gigs, 64 gigs of memory and 32 sticks. We will be updating that to um, our, to 124 at some point. I have two solid state one terabyte drives, two one terabyte M.2 MVEs. I am running with a GeForce, sorry, and gigabyte uh, RTX or GeForce RTX 3070. And we are using a 100, sorry, 100, 850 watt platinum power supply. Um, as for our monitors, this is my 2K monitor. On the other screen that you can't see is my 4K monitor. Thank you very much, Alexis. Um, I will be doing that probably towards the end of today's video, by the way, uh, which, sorry, Harry, uh, Harry or Hari, I will be doing that towards the end of today's stream. I just want to get through all the other lovely things. So we have our skies here. Now, what I want to do with this in place is just take a look at our volumes. And do we have, I don't like there's no search feature. That That is one thing I am not happy with. There is no search feature. All right, so what I am looking for, by the way, is our cloud. So we have light map density. Am I just blind and not seeing? Let's go to visual effects. Volumetric cloud, it's under visual, there we go. All right, so with our volumetric clouds selected, let's just see if I can build lighting. Um, advanced brush, active. Fracture editing mode, so that's a KS engine right there. Let's build up here. We're gonna do build lighting only. And I will, uh, yeah, allow swarm agent access. All right, hopefully this won't crash. I'm, I'm having little bits of heart attacks as I do things in this, like, oh dear God, don't crash. I, it's frozen, by the way. <laughs> it is actually frozen. I'm assuming it's just because it's, uh, I can search if I type. Okay, good to know. We will try that in just a moment. What's interesting is the plugins for uh, Quixel aren't automatically activated, so I will uh, attempt to activate those in just a moment. Uh, I... I think it's actually doing something and you just can't move around like you could in UE4 or my computer is dying. Shaders are still not finished. Yeah, I really can't see that. The mic is in the way. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, I'm just gonna just panic for a moment. Feel my heart pounding. Um, yeah. So how's everyone doing today? Are you all excited that you, hey, there we go. Okay, so while it's doing the building lighting, I'm just gonna type into our create here and do, so yeah, if you type, it actually does work. And apply new lighting build, we'll apply now. Let's see, and let's see what we get for that, just because we changed the light box. And we have our volumetric clouds, which, let's just go up a bit, and we're gonna just, change our camera speed to something drastic here. Hey, look. So the volumetric clouds are about the same as in the earlier iteration of Unreal, but we have volumetric clouds. Let's try our hotkey, and I'm just gonna go back to the wall. I'm gonna hit F, and our hotkey, ooh, I should also probably lower this back down to uh, four and that to one. There we go. So our hotkey is working. Let's see what else there is around in terms of the sky atmosphere. Let's see what else we can change. Planet to absolute world origin. Uh, not gonna actually, uh, why not undo that? Thank you. Um, oh God, that is much more of a drastic effect than it was on UE4. 
That's good to know, though. So yeah, we we do have the sky. The sky tools are a bit more meaningful here. It looks like I like that. All right, so we still have Rayleigh. We still have our Mia. We still have our Atm absorption. So we are going to get a bitter, bitter, better sort of lighting build with this version of the engine than we will with earlier versions of Unreal, which is nice. By the way, I, while I am not a big fan of 4.26. I do like the lighting uh, tools for the sky atmosphere in 4.26, especially with volumetric clouds. Actually, I'm going to take my comment back earlier about the volumetric clouds being about the same. These ones actually move much more nicely. Um, all right, so the next thing we're going to do is first we're going to open up a blueprint, and let's just take a look at one of the already pre-built blueprints for us. We're going to go to the first person blueprint here. So it looks like this one's automatically loaded in the... Um, not full editor mode you can still dock it at the top so this is what the non-full editor looks like we don't care about this right now we'll come back to this in a minute let's go to the full editor and here is our full editor we have our usual construction script our viewport um hmm interesting so i am just going to take a quick look at the documentation to see if there is um any sort of issues that i don't know about because i can't move around inside the viewport yeah um oh hey i can do that all right there we go so uh my movement right now is being controlled by my middle mouse wheel but i can't seem to move in the viewport so i'm just going to check the documentation See if there is anything that I am missing. It doesn't actually say. Great. So that works. I can I can do that. Uh, we have our usual top perspective. So yeah, it's about the same. I mean, the, the UI is different. I am not a fan of this font, to be fair, but if you don't know, you can actually change your font in here. Uh, you can do that usually in settings. Let's see, event begin play. We have our usual nodes. They look about the same. Let's pull off and do a branch just to have something there. Oh, here's one question. Q still works, by the way. I tried Alt and Middle Mouse. I'll try that again just to be on the safe side. Nope. Alt, Control, nope. Shift, no. Oh, I got something to change there. How did I do that? Okay, so it looks like it's Shift. No, it... Huh. So it's shift middle mouse for me. It's not alt middle mouse. Interesting. So it's shift and middle mouse. But I it, it's jumping. So as I do this, it jumps. It is not a smooth movement. I don't know why that is. By the way, I used F to get back to the camera. Reopen the editor. The editor or the particular window? I'm not sure you're going to try the particular window first. Ah, there we go. And, yep, so you can move around using this in the middle. So I'm just going to hold my hand up so you can see what I'm doing. That That's my left hand, so I'm not holding the shift down. This is moving currently with my left mouse button my right mouse button, my middle mouse wheel. When in doubt, open and close stuff. All right, so let's take a look at our class settings. We have a better list for our interfaces right here when we add in interfaces. So I do like that, that this is much more clearly lined out and I can highlight over it. Again, I'm not a fan of this part, but I am a fan of this part. Let's just add a new variable in to test this out. 
And let's compile this just to see, yep. So we have our usual, and the B doesn't show up. All right. Project on starting, crashing, not compiling. Um, okay, so this, apparently the issue I'm having in the UE5 project right now, uh, Chika, uh, Chika is just pointing out, there's a lot of talk on Unreal Slackers, the Discord, unofficial Discord for Unreal, saying that there are issues with the um, C++ version, which is currently what I'm using. I will create a blueprint project in just a moment. Let's just go back up to our content for a moment. And let's create a material, just so we can see what this looks like. See if there's any differences here. All right, so for regards to our materials, it looks pretty much the same. We have our physical, so a little bit of a difference that we have the physicals up here instead of one down, but we have our usual surface, deferred decal, light function, volume, which by the way, if you're making volumetric clouds, really useful, post-processing user interface. What I'm curious about actually is, have they added in tooltips for this? No, they have not. Let me just put a uh, saturate in instead. And yep, we still have um, all of our usual nodes with information. Unfortunately, the, it looks like the six sky atmosphere ones. So these six right here, this is a new one. Uh, doesn't look like they have any documentation still. Fortunately, there is a tutorial about that. Um, I think it's probably Visual Studio update that hasn't been deployed yet. That's probably fair enough. It's causing the issue. That's fine. Um, so this is about the same as before. So nothing has changed in our material editor. We still have our ability to do live nodes. We have a hierarchy system. That is new. We have a search feature. Oh, well, I mean, the search feature has always been part of the regular blueprint. I don't remember if this, I don't remember seeing a search feature in materials previously. So that is, um, yeah. By the way, you know, this is just to explore what the new engine has built in. What I am really curious about is this new physics editor. Oh, okay. Let's just grab this little cube here. We're going to do a. Uh, let's just see, we're going to do a random seed. Just we literally pick a random seed. Uh, put some grout in there. Add a little bit of noise, just to see what happens. Can I fracture? Nope. Auto. Okay, let's try this one. Let's put a brick mode on that. All right, let me just take a look at the new physics feature for the chaos physics field. I mean, the, the nodes have changed a little bit. There's a little bit more depth and shadow to them outside of the event begin play. But to be fair, I mean, I'm not too concerned about it. I just kind of want it to work right. That, that's the main thing for me. Does this work right? Oh, I actually have to add something into that for that to work. Okay, cool. I can't just fracture something in the world, apparently. Let's take a look at our landscape mode real quick. So our landscape mode is about the same. We can create a landscape. I'm just going to import a random landscape on this map. I know it's kind of weird. Yeah, I didn't create the asset. That was the thing. I was wanting to see if I could do it with something in the world already. I'm also just going to delete this back. Whoa. I'm apparently in uh, sculpt mode. Let me undo that. Let me go back to um, editor or the place mode. And let me just delete this back wall just, just so we have that back wall gone. All right, let's go back to our landscape mode. Let's go to manage. Let's see if we can add in. We can add in more landscape. I'm just going to move off to the edge here so we can take a look at that. So like before, 
We can add in more components as we see fit. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of lag. Let's see, we can add in a second landscape, which we can just put above and rotate to go upside down if we'll let me rotate it. I'm gonna just create this one first real quick and then I'm gonna rotate this piece of landscape. There we go. Select this landscape. I there is a rotate gizmo. So say I don't see the rotate gizmo. And oh wow. Snapping is really fast actually on that. There we go. So we can get two landscapes in like before. Let's just delete that landscape. Let's go back to our landscape editor. This is a little bit easier to work around and you can actually see what the brush types are. I do like the new UI. Um, that is really nice. Honestly, on this, I, I, this is just visually much easier, I think, to work with. So we, we have our same tools as before. You can't really see anything. Um, let me just do a sculpt real quick. Give ourselves a bit of material to play with. Um, there we go. And let's just smooth out this part. So it is, there's an alpha brush, which I'm just using the default alpha texture. I'm not putting anything in there. And what's this one? This is a, another, oh, it's a pattern brush, okay. We have our flatten and we can see what the different types of fall offs on our brushes do, which is nice to see. Let's see, we have use flatten slope. Okay, what I'm curious about is on our smooth, do we have the choice on smooth up or smooth down? like we did in UE4. Uh, I am not seeing anything for that, but we do have some nicer tools. I will say there's a bit of um, lag on that movement. If you can't see the ghosting on the tool there. Um, sorry, Brain Dancer. Anyone be able to get to the Matthew Wad scene intro course? Uh, can't get to the full video. No idea. So let's also look at the paint mode real quick. So we have our usual paint mode. I clearly don't have any. No. Yeah. Let's go to our foliage mode. And let's just see what we have in our starter content. Uh, we're going to filter this by static meshes. And we're going to paint uh, the UE4. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we'll just paint this into the world. All right, let's paint in some of it. Whoa. Okay, uh, I didn't realize how dense that was when I did that. And uh, yeah, that painted in quite nicely, actually, despite the density. All right. I mean, there are currently 2K of those little orbs on the map. And uh, while I'm having a little bit of lag, it, uh, I'm having the lag not due to that is lagging with the fact that my it's a little bit behind my mouse and that was happening before i did this there are currently seven thousand of these on the map <laughs> um so yeah that that seems to be uh painting quite nicely <laughs> take take from that what you will i am now going to just control z most of those and that was actually a really fast foliage cleanup. I'm gonna use my shift key to get rid of the rest of these. Okay, so um, while erasing the uh, cubes I painted on using the shift mode, there are now zero on the map, by the way. Um, it, as you saw, had some bit of an issue. Single is much easier to find now, that's cool. Let's try what the fill does. I'm terrified to see what this fill does. Okay, so the fill worked there <laughs> and put 800 or 201 of our little orbs there. I just, I just kind of want to see how much this will let me get away with. Oh my god, I can keep filling. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me so happy. All right, so I will say the foliage painter tools are much, much nicer to work with. I kind of like that. Um, let me go back to my... Yeah, we're just gonna 
remove from the level. Yes, remove all 1700 instances. All right. Oh, we have a mesh painter mode now. What what is this? So, let's see how our mesh painter works. All right. So the widget clearly is only active on our static meshes. And I can't switch meshes right now, it looks like. So there's our brush. You can see it's picking up one of the vertices there. Let's change the paint color just to something that might stand out a bit more. Okay. I'll try the fill mode instead. Fill mode doesn't seem to work, so I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong with this version of our mesh paint, but hey. All right, let's do a new, and we'll create a geometry for, for that. And we're gonna do a brick fracture. Let's fracture that now. All right, by the way, it is still compiling shaders down there if you haven't noticed. Um, so the chaos engine we have, it's a little bit more easy to access. You will have to create well, static meshes for it, apparently. Just like before, just like with the old engine. Oh, oh God. Oh God, no, no, stop. Whatever I just did. Um, hey, Josh, welcome in. And as for the 3070, I will say it doesn't run Cyberpunk as well as the 1080 did. It really doesn't. Um, I really want to see what happens when I... Jesus. Let's see what our uh, FPS is at, by the way. I just deleted the S in that set, FPS. So I'm currently at 60 with a latency of about 15 uh, microseconds there. Yeah, it is, I'm horrified by the fact that the uh, widget doesn't move with it. I'm just gonna controls that a couple of times. The editor has frozen as it recompiles whatever I'm doing. Oh dear God. Oh dear God. Oh dear God. <laughs> you can see the frame rate just dropping uh, to 25 frames as I hit control Z. It is currently at 10 frames, which is also a little bit terrifying. Let's go to our brush editor mode and see what is different here. Kind of curious about this actually. Is there, are any of these counting as uh, brushes? No, so we're going to go back to our create mode here. Uh, I just hit the wrong thing. I wanna to go to create and we're gonna put in a, I do like it has uh, the basic ones here. Ooh. Okay, so. Uh, I just go up here, BPS, BSP, brush. Nope, okay. Yeah, I know to use the pen tool HP and orthographic, what I was trying to do was see if I can get a vertex to show up on any of these so I can see if I can edit the BPS brush. But I don't think these count as BPS brushes, I think. I think I might be misremembering where something is located. We're just gonna grab a cube real quick and drop it on the map. There we go. Raise this up here. By the way, does the end key still work? The end key does still work, by the way. I just... does not want to let me do that. All right, so really quickly, by the way, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to tab back into Epic and I am, what is that ad for? That's Spotify. I have no idea who that was a picture of on Spotify. I am just gonna very quickly start a new project that is not um, C++ based so we can actually take a look at what it looks like in Blueprint when it runs. 
And what we're going to do for that actually is we're going to import one of my tutorial projects. We'll import Survival Tutorial 2.6 here over to the new version. That way we have something already running. We can take what it looks like. We can see how the changeover works. Oh, let's hope this works. Uh, open copy. <laughs> Dear God, do not replace my tutorial file. All right, so uh, man, it's actually creating really quickly. That's faster than it usually is for um, for things. Oh, this is the old version. So yeah, that that is pretty awesome that it's done that. Um, I'm just gonna close out this. No, don't don't save that. Also, don't save that. It's still loading in the background, by the way. So while it's loading in the background, what we're gonna do is just take a look at other things in here. So let's take a look at our animations. Sorry, I'm just kind of curious what else is in here. Uh, so that should be, we don't have any animations in this version, do we? Whoa. Uh, um, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> oh. um, it looks like the tessellation just had a bit of a heart attack somewhere. I Did I click something that I wasn't paying attention to? I I don't know what the shoot just happened here, guys. Um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna delete the landscape. Um, <laughs> some of the Fallout 76 rendering effects. Yeah, that was um not expected. That could be, I'm not sure that's an anite. I'm not sure if these uh, meshes are being rendered with the new nanite. For those of you not familiar with uh, what we're talking about when we say nanite, one of the new features in Unreal 5, UE5, is the nanite uh, visual, virtualization um, of micro polygon geometry. So it allows people to have more geometric detail, uh, makes, it's meant to make it look more natural. God knows that that's actually true. My frame rate has still tanked, by the way. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit terrified by what I just saw. I am gonna just double check and see how the other thing is doing in the background. We are at 93% for that one. Uh, no, it's an RTX 7, uh, 3070. I actually, my local store has, by the way, if you live in the UK and you want a 3090, my local store has three 3090s. They're 2,000 pounds a piece. Yeah. Uh, the start content, let's take a look at that. We still have our floor, we still have our basic shapes. We have our bush, we have our preview. No, the start content is the uh, no, we are we have less start. Oh, sorry, I have my static mesh settings on. So we have our same architecture. We have our audio. By the way, let's take a look at our audio cues. See if they look different. Because yeah, let me turn PC sound on from OBS so you can hear anything that I hear as well. So we still have the same attenuation settings. Looks like everything is about the same there. Let's see in terms of blueprints, what do they give us? We have a, wow, look at the frame rate tank on this 3070. Let's take a look at our light. Still don't like that uh, layout. Ooh, that, that took a moment. Ooh, look at that lag. 
I do like the fact... I don't know if I don't remember if this is changed or not, but uh, no, that's the widget. I do like the uh, widget for the point light. That, that's cool. You have that little uh, proper b different. That's a different bulb. That gives me a a question. That has a question for me. Raises a question for me. I just want to take a look at our different lightings. So our directional light. So that'd be a secondary directional light. Wow. Notice the tank. The frame rate tank there. Uh, that, that's kind of nice. We have the same sort of sun for the directional, but it's lit up when I have it selected. Take a look at that point light. So our point light is still our flash, uh, regular fla old flash bulb, flash f f f light bulb. <laughs> um, we have the same attenuation radius stuff. Let's take a look at our spotlight. I like the fact that the UI highlights it when you have it selected. I don't like the fact that I uh, have to rely on the arrow for this one instead of the widget's location. It does seem to move much more smoothly though. But what the heck is, I'm not sure if anyone saw that, but a whole bunch of like particles just showed up over there. So yeah, that's the same. Um, let's go back to our HDRI, see if there's, yep, same standard HDRI. Let's take a look at our asset map. Let's go to our starter map and see if there's anything different there. Yeah, I have a 3070. Yeah, um, uh, Frank, uh, uh, my local store has three 3090s, the RTX 3090s. They are literally selling them for 2,000 quid. Um, the starter map, don't save. Please don't save. I don't want you to save what I've done to this map. So again, there is a bit of lag in this engine, and I'm not sure if that's due to the fact that I'm live streaming this and I do have my own stream open, and have OBS open. I do know having both open in the past did cause issues for UE4. So take from that what you will. But uh, yeah. Of course, this is also, I'm also running two UE5 projects. And it, again, it's fair to note this is in early access, so things are going to be a bit um, preview -y. I think is the best way to put it and the politest way to put it and honestly the most accurate way to put it. Sorry, I muted for a second while I opened a can of pink monster up because I need to take a sip of something. The fact that it's taking this long to load. Um, I wanted to show... Okay. Uh... Changing. I am. I'm gonna put the Quixel bridge on on this. Vir uh, virtualized shadow maps. Ah, thank you. Um. Previewy. I like how you. Uh... So, by the way, for those of you who don't know, this is from the Survival Series tutorial. Let's take a look if we can actually get this to play here without it crashing. It's going to crash. By the way, this is Blueprint. Yeah, it's crashed. All right. So um, I might create a blank Blueprint project and see if that works better. There we go. I actually am going to restart that project uh, just to put Quixel Mixer on. I did install the plugin, so hopefully it does work and it didn't do anything wonky. I am going to uh, rely on the word preview, -y, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, as the word of the day. God, if I eat a piece of candy every time this thing's going to crash on me during the stream, I'm going to get diabetes. Also, if I eat a piece of candy every time my um, 
my ISP went out, I would already be dead. But again, it's out for a day. This is, honestly, the fact that it's loading and not crashing on load is a good sign to me. That's terrifying looking. That is something I find that um, has been a thing since UE 2.5, 4.25 that is. Um, no, that's within the sky sphere. Don't give me that error message. Oh, it's still compiling my 10,000 shaders. Uh, maybe that's why it crashed. Well, whilst it's doing that, let's get our, um, our thing up and let's go over to our, uh, materials. Let's go to our sky. And that is the wrong sky. It's weather systems. Let's go to clouds. Let's go to my clouds custom. By the way, I have an entire tutorial on how to make my custom cloud thingies. The reason why you can't see them in this map is technically I've, the default setting is for a clear sunny day. So let's just go in here and I'm going to get rid of the clear sunny day and just put my test clouds back in. Let's hit apply. Um, I should get clouds automatically. So you still can't see the volume here, but what you can see is the volume down there and what it should look like. Let me just go to my instance here and make sure I haven't set anything weirdly. I'm just gonna unpin this for a moment. And go back here. I don't need this part of it. And I don't need that much. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, no, we should have clouds. Why don't we have clouds? Uh, okay. I'm a bit concerned by the fact that my clouds aren't showing up. Hmm. Yeah, we are still using the right material. Interesting. I'm just going to hit save here, make sure I haven't screwed something up. No, altitude uh, for this. So this is my own custom setup for my clouds. Altitude just sets the uh, curve. And the curve just sets the number, the the height of the back end of the cloud. But just, just to show you. So it's actually just this setting in here. It's the setting for the red channel that it's really looking at, that's all altitude is. This never should be active, unless I did a test one in here at some point. No, I did not do a test one. Cloud tiling, change it to 40. Contrast are my default settings like I want them. Those are set to what I want. My speed set to what I want. Interesting. You know what? I know why it's not showing. We're just going to build all. By the way, if you want to see what the clouds look like, there is a preview of this weather system that I'm having issues with here. For the survival series already on my channel, I will post a link in the chat in just a moment. Sorry, I'm trying to find the link because I have all, like, I have the first 20 some odd videos for the next series already uploaded and available to Patreon supporters. Um, oh, wow. Uh, you can't see this, but I just got a whole bunch of error messages in the other window. 
Sorry, give me a second. I am copying the link to the other video. Boom, boom, boom. I'm trying to get the uh, error messages. Uh, it's frozen for a moment. Basically, uh, the error messages are about the trees. The trees are going to be an impact thing, potentially, on lower end systems. Panic, panic, panic. I do like that it says under here on this UI what they are. I do think they can cut a bit of that space out, though, because that is a lot of dead space to move my mouse through. Yeah, so it's uh, doing something. It's frozen. We'll take a look at the Niagara systems as well uh, once this unfreezes and see what's going on with the new Niagara. See if there's any changes to Niagara. I am a bit concerned that on a very high-end system that it is taking this long to do the compiling of the shaders and building the lighting. To be fair, on this map, I do get that. There is a, the lighting on this map can take ages to build. This is not a um, gentle map because I'm using the uh, open world demo trees, which just are not optimized for gameplay. They're optimized for showing off how pretty the engine can be. Oh, come on. 33%. So how's everyone's day been? Is everyone doing well? Have you had a cookie today? If you've not had a cookie, go get yourself a cookie. Cookies are good. Sorry, I'm moving the mic closer to now that I'm sitting a little bit further back. Dynamic shadows will cause an extreme performance hit. A hit performance hit unless B cast dynamic shadows is set to false. Seriously, it is. It's probably converting to yeah. It probably is converting still. I don't know if you can hear my RTX fans and my CPU fan going crazy, but they are going off really loudly right now. I've not heard my computer sound this uh, distressed yet. It's okay. It's okay, computer. You're a pretty computer. My Windows 7 will love you, E5. Um, I can download more RAM. I wish. You know those old pirating things that say you wouldn't download a car? Well, now that you can 3D print a car, yes, I would. And if I could download more chips and RAM and, and download, you know, uh, a better a 3090, I would. Yeah, yeah, I would. You don't know me. I would. You have an i9, uh, 990, RTX 1080, 30. So you have on 64 gig of RAM and a 7, uh, uh, 3070. What is my processor? Ryzen 5? <laughs> when I compile shaders on my... So um, just remember, for anyone who doesn't know, when you compile your shaders, they are compiled on the CPU, but run from the GPU, typically. You can't change where it compiles from. I wish you could. It would make life easier. I suspect the 1060 will be able to handle um, UE5. I doubt you'll get the full ray tracing abilities. 
I believe 1070s and 1080s are able to do ray tracing with a new update, but in theory, yes, you should. Uh, Nanite seems to require, yeah, so the Nanite is going to require um, the ray tracing abilities. So some of the uh, um, 10 series will do, do have ray tracing uh, in it. If you don't know about that already, yes, the 1080 can ray trace. It is, is activated in a plug a plug in a driver update about six months ago, maybe a year ago at this point. I've kind of lost track when that happened. Um, but that said, we don't know what the full specs requirements are going to be for UE5. We we just have, you know, we're aiming at next gen platforms. We're thinking towards PS5, Xbox, when we're talking about next gen in this case right now, which does likely mean um, that the lower end GTXs might not be able to do everything, i.e. ray tracing. But remember, this, this program, this editor, has to be built for systems that are older anyway. If you're developing for a mobile phone, my mobile phone does not have ray tracing. It isn't a case, by the way. My mobile phone, you know, is going to need simpler stuff. And you can use U UE5, I was going to say UE4, to develop for mobile phones. If you didn't notice, we had the, mo the, uh, the mobile option. So do bear that in mind. And again, per what I was saying a moment ago, with the um, GTX series, some of the GTXs can ray trace. Wouldn't then more cores and more VRAM help? Well, yeah, no, no, I'm not saying, you know, it, it wouldn't help. The more processing speed you have, the more processing speed you have. By the way, the editor is still frozen. <laughs> I am just going to check if there's anything going on in the background that I need to be aware of. I am, yeah, the editor is utterly frozen. I am going to close this out, by the way. Um, hmm. I should have started my watch as a timer to see when, when this froze on me, just to see how long I want to wait. All right, I am going to say one thing I really, really hate about UE5 right now. There's one really, really, really important thing that I miss from UE4. I'm going to move my mouse on my screen to what I miss. <laughs> Anyone know what I'm talking about? And I'll give you a hint. It's my crash versus I'm running fine warning symbol. If you don't know what I'm referring to, I'm, I'm referring to the tutorial hat. God, that tutorial hat is so useful for knowing when my engine is fully crashed and returned. All right. Um, I actually do like the fact that the command window comes up like that. Oh, hey, hey, we're on froze. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that bloody tutorial thing. <laughs> Seriously, that hat is so useful. There were all those warnings I was talking about earlier about the trees. Yeah, I know my localization services is disabled. By the way, source control is down in the bottom right now. It's no longer in the top. Source control is disabled. All right. Building lighting. Uh, let's see. I want to go to wireframe. It doesn't tessellate the same way as it did earlier. That's interesting. Go back to lit. Uh, I am asking what could help out when it comes to PC parts uh, choices for Unreal. I'm new to game making, so I'm trying to. Okay, so um, 
you never use the tutorial. Sorry, hang on. I'm going to respond to that in just a moment. Um, most wanted. With regards to... <coughs> excuse me. With regards to what Arash said... Um, <coughs> I don't use the tutorial thing. I just look for the flashing green circle. If the green circle is flashing, your editor is good. If the green circle is not flashing, your editor is bad. It's frozen. All right, so um, most wanted. I think the thing to really consider here is a twofold thing. One, are you designing for the highest end platform in the world? Or are you designing for a particular target platform? Now, if you're designing for a mobile phone, do you need to be worrying about ray tracing in the editor? If you're designing for, you know, last gen consoles or uh, older GTXs, again, do you need to be worried about ray tracing? If you, you want to do ray tracing in a game, then yeah, you're going to want something that can do ray tracing so you can test stuff out. And again, that's just a personal opinion. Um, so for me, I do VR work mostly. So a lot of my, my stuff actually is VR related, by the way. All that stuff's been moved over to my work computer, which is not this computer. Um, and for that VR stuff, what I'm doing, you know, I just need a system that can run v a VR headset. It runs a Vive, by the way. I really prefer working with the Oculus. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it does matter. When I package a template for UE4, I, I can open the Axie, but it's eating my whole GPU memory 100%. I might try to once get my hands. Uh... I get ADHD medica ADD medication. That's why I asked you um, to do the packaging and show the task manager. True, I will do that because I know this should run. I will package this and we'll test this out. And I know this should run. What I am going to do is I'm just going to control a save real quick. The clouds still haven't worked correctly. I'm a bit concerned by that. I do like when it goes Minecrafty. All right. So it looks like the shaders have compiled. Let's hit play. It's going to crash again. I will pay. Yeah, there we go. It crashed faster. Uh, crashed on BP project. We will package that project and just see what comes out. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. No, don't reopen that. I do want to manage the plugins, though. I want to get uh, Quixel back in here. I installed it. I'm going to reinstall it, I guess. Uh, and we'll take a look at the Quixel bridge then. I'm also concerned about that tree's billboard back there. That billboard is not the billboard for that tree. I, I will worry about that later. All right, let's package this out. Um, new level, open asset, favorite level, recent level. Okay. Edit, window, tools. Debug, profiler, audit, platforms. Find blueprint, change list. Ooh, hey, there's a change list included now. I like that. Um, why are you looking for a C++ class? This isn't a C++ project. Really, you should have to generate the project file first. That's interesting. I wonder if it thinks it's a C++ project. All right, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look at the documentation to see where they moved this button to. And we'll take a look at the other new features in just a moment. Just 
Am I utterly blind? Recent levels, favorite level, open, open, new, new, open. <clears throat> Right. And there's under build, there's a normal build. There's no packaging moved into here. Okay. I'm looking for the moved um, packaging of projects too. Also, does G still do stuff? G does not. Yeah, okay. So uh, immersive mode, by the way, crashes things. Did you see packaging? Or are you just answering the question for uh, Unearthly Whales. By the way, I love that name, Unearthly Whales. Package settings. Yeah, G definitely does something. It causes it to crash. All right, so uh... <laughs> you know what? I'll actually probably read the um, the crash in a moment. Package project for Lumen. Why? Why is it for Lumen? Uh, I want to. What? Huh? Huh? Windows. Well, that was uh, an interesting experience. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of where that's located. And also, I'm very confused why it's trying to do it in Lumen. And I wonder if that's why I keep getting the crash. I'm just going to move this off screen. Okay. Yes, yes it is. It's for a new tutorial series. I think I still have the link to my buffer, so if I do, oh, whoa. Hey, you know what? Apparently I saved the uh, crash error from earlier, so I'm just gonna paste that in there. So there is something with the motion blur. Okay. Interesting. Sorry, I'm just checking what's going on in the background. Also, to show what this project is, I have posted a link in chat to the UE4 tutorial well, preview for section five. Stop scrolling after a while. I had to use the, uh, yeah. All right. 
Operating still in progress. <coughs> Sorry for the cough. Obligato obligato oh. Obligatory not COVID cough. Honestly, while I'm very curious about the new bells and whistles that have been built into the engine, I want to make sure that what we currently have actually still does, well, stuff. Uh, did you pick up anything new that uh, piques your interest, or do you feel uh, this build is more like a... This is going to be probably a Lumen uh, demo. Then a Nanite demo. Mostly because I, I do a lot more with lighting in this tutorial than I, I, I thought I would be doing. So it most likely will be based on the Lumen uh, settings in terms of the uh, global illumination and reflections. And I probably will be doing a lot more with the shadows due to how I want the di the dynamic vo volumetric clouds to work. Um, I am curious to see how Nanite actually works. I uh, so for this project, yeah, it's gonna be more. I'm more interested in Lumen. In general, I am more interested in the um, geometry aspect because that, that honestly, um, one of the really really nice things about working. Uh, in research is I get to see some really cool uh, particle um, renderings of things and they can look uber uber realistic and they're really sweet and I kind of want to see if Nana can you know do do particle rendering slightly better um what about you what interests is what interests you in this are you, are you guys more interested in the lighting the shadows, the the reflections, the nanite. Are you interested in the new world uh, building features? Um, okay, so. Just to be aware, as I'm sitting here and waiting for this finished building, um, when you switch platforms, oh, I have not had a chance to check out the logic. I've just been reading the documentation. Uh, so yeah, so from a personal point of view, I am much, much more interested in the nanite aspect of it um, because, yeah, that that honestly, if they can pull off what they claim they can pull off, kudos. In terms of probably what I'll be working with the most right now, lighting. Mostly because I'm not a visual, I'm not a, I'm not a 3D artist. I can do lighting though, kind of, sort of. I can play with the values until I get it to look like what I want. Um. So yeah, uh, UE4, which sorry UE5, which is uh, in that communications UE5 early access EA. Uh, does not support 32-bit platforms. There are no plans to add 32-bit platform support in the future. This is coming from Epic Documentation. UE5 Early Access standardizes target platform names, and developers will need to update their build scripts. In some case, devicesprofile.ini. This primarily reflects developers who run them directly. Developers who are use who use the UAT should not need to make changes, and okay, so that's something to be aware of. I'm not gonna worry about the Xbox stuff. Um, there is some C++ changes with the T object pointers. It looks like, and there's uh, UE5 uses the Chaos Physics engine to simulate physics, replacing Physics X as default. Although Physics X still exists in UE5 early access. It will be removed from later releases. All right, so we're getting that same error that we were getting earlier. Yeah, the launch failed. So we're just gonna cancel this for a moment. And uh, what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm just going to pop open the project files. Give me one second.
Let's go over to the survival game. And let's just pop this back onto screen. Um, yeah, I doubt there's much I'm going to be able to do with Nanite. Yeah, it interests me. Yeah, it sounds cool, but yeah. Um, we're going to look for our vice profiles. Dot A. Oh, that is empty. That is empty. And that's empty. Okay, so we're not going to get this project to launch, unfortunately. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're just going to pop open another version of... Uh, have I tried it? I mean, I've been running that... Pro I've, Arish, I've recorded... Hang on. Let me, let me show you how many tutorials for that series I've recorded. Videos. Raw. I, I've recorded 71 tutorial videos. By the way, there's going to be more than 71 videos. I'm doing prep videos again. And, and just to give you a bit of a preview. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the... This is an edit as the sound's off. In today's video, we are going to finish our weather system. We're going to start a ongoing... So, yeah, it, it that I have done on YouTube. works. So yeah, that it, it works in other versions of the engine. We're gonna create a. Um, I do plan on doing an updated RTS tutorial just because I don't like the mistake. So by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, when I started doing that series, there was two things I was new to. I was new to YouTube. That's why the video quality is piss poor and the sound quality is piss poor. I didn't know anything about sound editing or video editing. I learned that through help of people in the community, and two. I knew C++ at the time, and I knew UE4 C++. I did not know Blueprint. And so I made some comments that are true in UE4 C++ that are not true in Blueprint. And so I'm going to go back and probably redo that series. I've already said I was going to anyway. Ooh, hang on. That's not what I want to be. I want to be in library. Library. We'll create another project. We'll do this one in Blueprint, and we'll see if this can load. But yeah, I, I probably, probably will be doing it in UE5 just because. All right, let's do games. First per you know what, let's do third person just because. We'll stay in Blueprint. <laughs> Please work. Ray tracing is turned off. We will leave starter content in. And we will pray to God that this actually loads. In the meantime, if you need to take a bathroom break, take a bathroom break, because this takes ages to load. Oh, wow. Okay, it's loading faster than last time. Shaders are compiling faster. The funny part is I've shaved this beard several times during lockdown. What should be more impressive is the hair. So yeah, no, um, I, I honestly, the reason why I don't do much C++ teaching, and I, besides, I'm going to get back into it, don't worry. Uh, I always said the next live stream was going to be a C++ tutorial. Clearly I lied if we're doing this. Um, I will get back in doing the RTS series in C++. Um, and I will be doing a, um, uh, getting back into recording the general C++ videos I was doing. The thing is, while I know C++, I am, for some reason, lacking my confidence in the ability to teach that topic. By the way, the shaders are compiled, so um, let's see if this works. Please work. It's going to crash. All right, so I'm just going to copy this error message into Google. Let's do this together. Let's go to let's go to Chrome together, ladies and gents, and and see what's here. Uh, UE five. I can't believe I'm typing in UE five. All 
All right. So preview one of the upcoming 4.2. That was not helpful. You know what? Let's just see if someone actually has brought this up in here. Um, nope. Uh, thanks, Epic. Uh, let me just check uh, GeForce Experience. I'm updated my drivers yesterday. By the way, I do have more games than this. I just those are the ones I currently have installed. I'm just gonna check for updates. So. I think what is really good, I think if you want to learn C++, there are multiple means of learning it. I One of the best, best tutors I've ever seen for C++, unless you have this diehard thing of, I want to know C++, you're not going to make it through his stuff because it's very, very dry. It's very, very boring, but it is the best taught C++ material I have ever seen. If you want to start learning the more practical applications in game development, working with Blueprint, you are learning object orientation if you do it well. You are learning encapsulation. You are learning polymorphism. You are learning logical structuring, which is why the RTS series is designed the way it is. I the RTS series isn't meant to teach the core principles of uh, object-oriented programming. That's what the survival series is for, by the way. The RTS series is meant to teach logic and how to think about things logically, and how to build lo and how to build a prototype because that really is a prototype project, um, and and go from there. And you can take and this is actually what I've been doing for the C plus plus tutorial I did or tutorials I was doing on on um on our, the rts series is that i took the bp project and actually looked at the logic and started converting that over to c plus plus so blueprint can help you understand some of the harder parts of of object orientation in terms of what an object is and how they interact with each other in a less and i don't mean this in a punny way but in a less abstract sense so it, it, it's useful for that like, trust me, it really, it is a great way to learn it. And I think anybody who goes, oh, Blueprint sucks, C++ is better. One, doesn't understand how Unreal was designed. You are meant to use both. And two, doesn't understand rapid prototyping. It is just an elitist. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really into that gatekeeping approach to things. You learn the way you learn best. If that's doing the dry, boring stuff, then... Talk to me in private. I'll send you a link to a, a guy's tutorial who is brilliant. It's not on YouTube. It's not free, just as an FYI. Um, and he is a university lecturer like myself. And if you wanted... Wow, I'm not that short, by the way. I am just slouching in my chair as I do this. If you want to, you know, have something where you can see really rapidly, are you doing what something that works, then I would really recommend um, working in Blueprint. So if you want to build something, when people talk about building something special, what they mean is, so is Linter, by the way. Uh, I know that uh, Chica will agree with you on virtual assist, by the way, on Earthly Whales. Linter is also really good. Um, so when people talk about wanting to build something special, they mean they want to have their own physics engine. They want to design their own physics tools. And yes, you're, you're going to want to build a custom engine or customize your UE4 engine to have your own physics tools in there. And you're not going to want to do that with the built-in tools. Okay, I'm just going to use this Android crash to see if I can work out what the heck's going on, by the way, with our UE5 project.
That is less than useful. Okay. By the way, if anyone knows this error, I'm going to post the error into chat. Uh, I believe it's L-I-N-T-E-R. I believe. <laughs> I, I have questions. I, I have I have a lot of questions. I'm going to just kind of ignore that for a moment, though. But I have a lot of questions. All right, um, let me just pop open one of the, uh, the C++ version of this. And we're gonna just travel over to line 1,129 inside of our engine source runtime. I mean, it really, they're not the same. So C++ is much closer to, um, is a low level language. Blueprint is not a low level language. So low level means a clo closer to assembly. Um, We'll try that in a moment, by the way. We'll, we'll try running it with, with DirectX 12 in a moment to see what happens. Um, so, that is a good point. I'm gonna have to figure out how to set that up in um, Unreal 5. So used to saying Unreal 4, it's actually causing me to pause for a minute. So just to make sure there are no weirdness here. So we're going to source. Wow, that took a moment. Runtime. From runtime, we want Windows. Boom. And then we're going to go into DD3. We want private. And we want our DD, D3, D1, or D11 uh, commands. There we go. And we are looking for, what line was that? 1,129. Excuse me, I almost hiccuped in all of your ears. I apologize for that. All right, line 1,100. By the way, I don't have Visual, virtual assist, visual assist or Linter installed by right now. So, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, uh, sorry, as I was saying, and, and he's covered me quite nicely on that. There's a lot more overhead in um, in in um, Blueprint. But here's the thing. A lot of that overhead is so trivial that you aren't going to notice it in most projects. I mean, if you're doing a large open world game, yeah, you might notice some of it. You might notice that loops run really poorly compared Paired keyword to C++. They don't run poorly compared to bad C++, but if you write your C++ code in an elegant fashion, yes, they do run poorly, but that is such a relative difference that it isn't noticeable. So when I say relative, it's the difference between, you know, 30 microseconds to run, iterate a loop of 100 or 1,000 versus 20 microseconds or milliseconds. Um, but typically what I recommend to someone who wants to try to do both is you start by working with the calculations. So anything that you want to do a set that is a mathematical calculation. So you want to calculate a number out. Um, and this can also be done in getters, I realize, but you, you do those in, in 
C++. Because it's relatively easy code to learn. And in fact, that's actually where mo you're going to make the most nodes are in mathematical based functions. And, and so doing that in C++, while easier, or sorry, while easy to learn relative to other parts of C++, it, it, it's a good sort of stepping off point. All right, so I'm looking for line 1129. So our error message is motion blur scene color does not have. You now I'm kind of more curious about this motion blur scene color thing actually now that I'm looking at this line of code. So let's just go back here. Yeah, I'm not seeing any reason why it shouldn't work. Yeah, a lot of those videos, okay, so a lot of people do these videos to show these differences. Be very mindful that when are you going to have 10,000 objects in being rendered at once? Remember, you might have 10,000 objects in your level. Yeah, don't get me wrong. You might have 10,000 objects or more, 100,000, a couple hundred thousand objects in your level. It depends on what you're doing. I'm not, I'm not judging your choices here. But what is important to note about this, why is it showing me all my projects? Uh, okay, I'm a bit concerned by that. Do I have it open in the other window? Oh, send and restart. There we go. Um, you're you, you're gonna have a lot of it called. If you're talking about like the RTS tutorial, where you have maybe you know you could have ten thousand units, what you're actually gonna want to do first there is create a custom movement component. You're gonna want to create something that works with different flocking mechanisms that works with different grouping mechanisms. You wouldn't want to use the standard, let me just pop this person open here as an example. Okay. Um, I was going to say before that happened, you wouldn't want to um, use the, the default movement component for the RTS series. All right, I'm, I'm really kind of concerned about that crash, by the way. So we're gonna go to third person blueprint, blueprints, third person character. I mean, this thing has a lot of overhead in there that you don't need. And really, you're gonna want to slave everything to its, its one master. All right, so uh, let's figure out how I can get this to run on DirectX 11. In fact, a lot of the times I will write um, I'll write stuff in C++ and then make it a blueprint. Yeah, I mean, like there's some a lot of fear of the unknown when it comes to stuff. So, like the people say, "Oh, tick are bad." Okay, ticks are used inappropriately in a lot of tutorials. I have done that, by the way. I have used ticks inappropriately in tutorials. Um, don't try DirectX 12 just to see if it works. Yeah, I don't know how to change it for... Uh... Okay. 
We're going to try this. Oh, this is going to crash. Yeah, it's crashed. Um... <laughs> I wonder how many crash reports they're getting, by the way, right now. All right. Let's just uh, go back to this, and then let's do I mean, I'm running on, on a, a 3070, so I'm a bit confused. Yeah, I have not gotten a single thing to launch. Ah, uh, default art. Let's go to direct 12 on that. Let's just try that way. I'm going to try Vulcan in a second. By the way, I would never, ever hate myself that much, Chica. I would never hate myself that much. Yeah, I set the default a RHI uh, to direct 12. I'll try 11. I'll try Vulcan. We'll see what works. By the way, for those of you who don't know why, why I'm saying I wouldn't hate myself that much, it's I wouldn't hate myself that much to do a UI purely in C++. Oh, hey, that's one thing we haven't looked at, by the way. Let's take a look at the widget. It... Oh, I kind of like that setting. That's going to be useful, actually. Um... Uh, oh, content. I'm on the wrong thing. I want brush and color. There we go. 0.5. Let's just toss another border into... No, not a button. Another border. So yeah, it's about the same way. <laughs> Please have updated the UMG. Yeah. I Oh, hey, they didn't delete these out of here. Actually, that does raise a question. So when we did that earlier, we did that with a... Um... I don't know how I feel about the new uh, billboard there. Oh, yeah, these are back in. Okay. I don't like the new comment boxes. <laughs> I will be fair on that. That doesn't really matter to anything. Uh, what we were going to do is let's go back to our project settings though, and let's see if we can get this to actually load something. So let's try DirectX 11. It's not going to work. It's crashed. As a web dev, UMG is not fine. I'm almost tempted. I, I have an idea on something I want to try, but um, yeah. This has been an interesting experience on, on it crashing multiple times. All right, let's try the last setting we have for that. Let's go to Vulcan. Just, just to see. 
Okay, I'm a sadist, Chica, and I'm not that sadistic. It's crashed. I'm just putting that to the side for now. It's crashing because it isn't able to... It, apparently, motion blur scene color, which I can't find anything about, uh, does not have a color bound for fast clears. And I don't know anything about the motion blur in, in this version. I'm I'm honestly kind of um, perplexed by this. I'm not on Vulcan. I just tr I just tried it, um, to put it on Vulcan to see if that would load it. I mean, I, I had to see if it would do anything. That is actually probably a good idea at this point. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't think of that. Turn off the thing that's not working. Because I'm sitting here in my head going, I wonder if I can find the motion blur code and just delete the part on color, but uh, yeah. Yep, I have uh, updated my graphics drivers. My Windows is updated, um, much to my chagrin. I'm not a fan of some of the updates to Windows. For some reason now, whenever I open um, PowerPoint, all the video playing features of Windows go crazy. What's concerning is it's stuck on compiling the shaders this time around, because I set it to Vulkan. <laughs> Instead of trying things. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting experience. I I'm gonna say it's honestly a little bit stressful doing this on a live stream. <laughs> like, that said, I do tend to live stream to my Patreon supporters when I'm doing stuff, and there are there was a stream once where uh, one of my community members, Rian, had to sit with me for four hours while, while I paused the recording in the tutorial to find why there was a bug. I, I had forgot one small setting in the tutorial file as compared to the prep file. Yes, I am using it. Actually, I'm using an, uh, an MVE. This is running on an M.2 MVE. Uh, so, uh, Jay, it's happening on all projects. Yeah, uh, it was compiling faster earlier. I think this is because I, I've changed the, the render settings. So, we've heard from uh, from Chica, who looked at Slackers, that um, there were problems being, problems being reported with C++ um, templates. I have tried both a C++ and Blueprint template. I have tried my own project file, which I uh, imported. Wow, it's redoing the shaders because it's still in Vulkan. Let me just uh, change my project settings back to <laughs> to actually DirectX. Jesus Christ. Um, let me... I mean, you saw me. I couldn't even get the project to package, Harry. Um, let me search for motion blur. We'll turn motion blur off. We are going to let this compile. I've been sitting here for an hour and some change. I am very quickly going to just... Sorry about that. I didn't mean to minimize that. Very quickly just mute myself and run to the bathroom.
and I'll be back in actually two hours, four minutes now, and I will resume in just a moment. I am just muting myself and turning the camera off. If I can figure out where my camera is. Camera, show up. There we go. All right, back in one moment. It's still compiling, still compiling. Uh, sorry, let me just catch up on the chat. Uh, I have uh, not actually done Valley of the Ancients because it was causing my stream to die. <laughs> um, I was downloading it uh, while, so I announced the time for the stream based on how long it should take me to download UE5 and install it. Got in about 30 seconds, or like, yeah, literally 30 seconds before I was supposed to start the stream, it finished installing. So, um, and I was downloading Valley of the Ancients in the background, and my ISP sucks. By the way, since I got cut off earlier, I'm going to quickly say this about my ISP. Hey, Virgin Media, cut your bullshit about saying that you can use whatever modem or router you want. That isn't true. Yeah, sure. I can plug in whatever router I want into your shitty ass modem. The problem is your shitty ass modem, which I am forced to use, despite laws in the UK. If you can find me a modem in the UK that for some stupid, stupid reason uses a coaxial input instead of a normal <laughs> a normal input then I'll fucking start to believe you part of my language two when you flat out say that your service only works if it goes through your hub which by the way is their name for their modem router combo then clearly you are lying through your teeth about being able to use whatever end terminal I want. Again, in violation of UK policy and law. Also, when you say there's no technical fault for months and months and months of someone having a problem and then send a text message going, hey, there's a technical fault, give them the fucking refund that they are owed. If not, you know what? I don't mind filing more complaints and going to an independent adjudicator because then I'm going to start charging you for my time. And trust me, one hour of my time is three months of bills. When you keep me on hold for two hours and hang up on me, that's six months of bills. That's my hourly. Sorry, I'm uh, done ranting. Thank you for that. I saw that the posts were going through, and I was ignoring it for a moment. All right, so we've turned off the collision. By the way, I'm still waiting for the substantial compiling down to the bottom there. We're at 98%. Once that's done, I will actually get into stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is what Dev is really like. I like that. Um, I hear that Nanite does not work with subsurface scattering. Can you confirm that? I have not tried uh, subsurface uh, scatter. Sorry. 
<laughs> I have tried some surface scattering. In fact, actually, one of the rain particles from the tutorial project uses sub surface scattering. I have not tried nanite yet. <clears throat> Uh, sounds like it uh, makes sense uh, to be honest as a changing the try count continuously uh, isn't subsurface scat so uh, subsurface scattering does work a bit differently because it, it's how the light is hitting and being reflected off yeah it's material based but if you're it, it <clears throat> subsurface scattering is going to be affected by the number of tris that you have, the number of polys you can see on the screen, because of how surfaces get um, tessellated or morphed based on camera position. All right. Uh, so yes, some of them will, not all of them. They haven't imported all of them yet. By the way, we've turned off motion blur. Let's see if this works. It's the motion blur. Hey. Fuck. M Sorry, I already swore. Um, I swore a lot in the last few minutes. I really do apologize about that. Uh, I try not to swear in these videos, as people know, which is really hard for me to do because I swear like... Um... I'm just going to swear again. <laughs> okay, so hey, that works. Now that we know what the issue is, let's actually get that project that we had up earlier back on screen. And let's see if we can get to work there because then we can actually take a look at some of the features more fully. What scares me is that they don't load into here. So fortunately I have the folder already open in the background. I'm just going to go over here, go over to survival game, survival 5.0, and let's just open the U project there. Okay, so turning off motion blur served every, solved everything. I mean, I was going to, uh, so that I mean, that was one of the options of what I could have said, but I was going to say something wildly, wildly inappropriate. Um, for anyone who's seen Blazing Saddles, think about when Taggart's in the bathtub. And he gets told he uses his tongue prettier than a... <laughs> Just gonna stop that sentence there and let you wonder if you haven't seen that film. All right. What concerns me again is the clouds aren't showing up, but whatevs. Okay, so the UMGs are not working correctly. Interesting. Yeah, none of the UMGs are working correctly. Um, there is some weird jittering going on, like... Yeah. Well, that UMG is working. Oh, wow. The sizing is really messed up here. Okay. Um, it's almost like slow-mo 10 is on based on how things are moving on the map. Just going to turn slow-mo 1 on, see if anything happens. All right, what's interesting is... It looks like the interfaces are busted. All right, that's something to be aware of. Uh, sorry, let me, just wondering, only one uh, I'm currently using is Power IK. Sorry, I missed what you said earlier, Mitchell. Do you mind uh, repeating your question? I, I, actually, let me see if I can find it. Because I don't remember, I, I didn't see what you said. I mean, the character always looks like an alien in this UMG. I, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a placeholder. It, it's, it's stretched. Um, yeah, I can't find your question, Mitchell. I, I'm sorry. Uh, would you mind just, yeah, repeating it? But, okay. So something to be aware of, by the way, is the in editor window for playing. It's F11 doesn't work. Oh, hey, it does. There we go. 
Yeah, there is some size differences here. Hey, my rain's working, but my clouds aren't working. Why aren't my clouds working? So there's our Niagara emitters working. Oh yeah, no, some of them will carry over. Um, I did not see if the IK ones have been carried over yet. All right, so some of the interfaces are working because the materials have definitely got that wet look. All right, so F11 still works, by the way. I'm just gonna go over to just watch it crash opening this thing. There, there is an entire three-part tutorial on that rain because it's actually four, one, two, three, four different emitters, by the way, to make that rain. Sorry, it's three emitters. One is reused twice. I do not like. No likey. No likey comment boxes. No likey. Uh, what sorcery is that, Jay? Oh, what rain without clouds? Yeah, I don't know why my clouds aren't working. I also, I have a really good feeling why the HUD wasn't working correctly. I turned off the timers. Let me just uh, redo that. Let's do in a standalone game. Uh, right now, that's a good question. What, what is our FPS right now? Uh, stat, FPS. I have lost. 30 FPS switching over uh, to to this. Just gonna go full screen. Yeah, I have lost. Actually, I'm, we're losing FPS because it's compiling. See you, Mitchell, and uh, hope you have a wonderful day. And there we are, back up to 60. Okay, that was a thunderclap with no clouds. Hey, there's the thunderbolt. There was another one over there. I'm not sure why my clouds aren't working. By the way, enjoy that thunder sound. So, yeah, there is something different on the motion on the character. And I'm not sure what it is. All right, so the UIs are partly working. I can see my character is getting hungrier. That's why I went to that carrot. Hey, there's a lightning bolt. I'm just going to keep feeding my character here for a moment. Yeah, give me give me one second. Let me uh, just get that up on screen. Oh, wow. I'm using 98% of my GPU right now, according to this. Hang on. We're going to uh, just going to try to tuck that over here. And we're going to tuck this here. Ooh, that was the wrong one. Yeah, it's using a fair amount of, uh, yeah, wow. Uh, thank you for being here, Unearthly Whales. I can solve that name still. So this is eating up a fair amount of, uh, of my processing, wow. I'm just going to let the character die. I haven't tried disabling virtual shadow maps yet. We just got this to properly actually load anything in. 
What's really annoying is the clouds aren't working. I don't know why, but yeah. So we'll continue through just looking at different things that we need to consider. I'm not sure why the movement is so honestly nauseating. I am literally... Oh, I hit the mouse button. That's what happened there. So I, I think the UI right now, Flame, is a mixed bag. There are parts of it I really, really like in this version of Unreal. And there are parts of it I don't like. So, um, for example, I don't like the outliner in the actors. I think it, it's not as easy to read. Um, but I do like the UI layout inside the uh, create menu, for example, in the editor. Um, my character died, by the way. There is no death screen yet for that. So, I mean, I like this bit. I like this. I don't like the fact that it isn't clear you can search. This is about the same. Now, I really do like, there was one thing in there that I really did like, actually. Let me just see if I can find it. Uh, when you go to class settings, I like how the interfaces are laid out, but this menu in a more complex thing, it's less pleasant to read. And I like the, I like the color. I think the color UE4 has the, or UE5 has theme editing. Cool. Good to know. I did not realize that. I didn't see that in the documentation. I just want to see something real quick. They fixed a bug. No, they did not fix that bug. Okay. Uh, by the way, don't worry about what bug I was just referencing there. It, it is something that would only interest me. It's something I purposely have put in just to see if it would actually work. All right. So we were going to look at... Um, I mean, in theory, yes, but it's very tricky to do. I would honestly, it's doable. In fact, there are actually projects out there you can get on the marketplace that do it for you. There was something I was going to look at, and I can't remember. Oh, shadow maps. Let's see if we can disable virtual shadow maps. See if we get some. Oh, we're not even using virtual shadow maps on this version. We're just using the regular shadow maps. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so we had the UI issue. We have the movement bounciness issue. Um, what else did we have issues with? I mean, there are ways to, but it is a lot of, of tinkering. Uh, we had issues with the UI. Let's take a look at the UI. Also, just talk in my goddamn layout, yo. I, I do kind of miss having the thing over here. What's that, Chica? What, what needs to be Googled? Uh, I have not done anything for mobile yet with UE5, so I'm going to go UE4 because it's just because something is new. Motion blur has been turned off. Oh. Sorry. I'm going to answer that question first. Just because something is new doesn't mean it's better. This is an early access. This is meant for developers to start working on things and to see how the tools work. I wouldn't be releasing anything for mobile or any platform on UE5 right now. And that isn't a slight against UE5. It's an early access. It's a chance for us to look at the tools, to see what tools we have available at our disposal, and to learn them. Once it's fully operationalized, operationalized? Once it's fully operational, this, this battle station will be an unstoppable force until Proton Torpedo 
It shot down our exhaust, exhaust port. Was it Proton Torpedo? Did I just ruin my own goddamn reference? Um, what do I think about UE3? Oh, dear God, I hate the blueprint editor in it. Or whatever they call their blueprint editor. That's painful to read. Honestly, to me, UE4 2.3 is the best version of Unreal Engine. If I can get the volumetric clouds from 2.5 and the sky atmosphere from 2.5 into 2.3, I'd be the happiest person in the world. A lot, a lot of people used Unity instead of Unreal because of the complexity, um, and that it wasn't as beginner friendly. Do you think Unity users would be attracted to UE5 because of these changes? I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about this question for a moment because there, there's a lot in that that I want to unpack and consider. Um, I mean, yes, you can still use UE3, by the way. Um, what I mean, what I would, what I mean to say is, do you think UE5 has a more beginner-friendly and user-friendly experience than UE4 or even Unity? See, for me, I'm not sure you can get it legally, but I know it's still, I, you can still get it from Epic apparently, because there are still um, companies that use it. Um, so there are ways to get it. So for me, answering your question, Flame, I personally do not find Unity as user-friendly as I did Unreal for programming purposes. For world creation in terms of adding things onto the map. Um, oh, I need to reinstall Quixel Bridge, by the way. Uh, sorry, Harry, give me one second. I will update Quixel Bridge while I'm thinking about that and while I'm doing this talk. Um, is it just under bridge? There it is. Um, this update i need to update it apparently i swear i did this update earlier download now um does rocket think you is ue4 i didn't know that um i i personally found uh, unity better for world placement and learning how to do the visual side of setting up stuff but i found epic to be um sorry epic i found unreal to be better for in more user-friendly for the coding side of stuff I think there is a lot of stigma around both Unity and Unreal with regards to different things. And I think in both cases, a lot of the stigma and beliefs around the two engines are inaccurate. I don't think as UE5 stands right now, there is enough of a difference um, that it would... Sorry. That it would attract users over from Unity. That said, I would still personally, if you're doing 3D games, um, I and you're not a visual artist, I tend to find that Unreal is more user friendly for that. Yeah, for sure. I looked for the plugin. I couldn't find the plugin. Unless it's somewhere where I'm just not seeing. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. And I'm just checking. I'm just signing into um, to uh, thing with Jigger real quick. Uh, 
But again, it, you know, at the end of the day, Flame, it really comes down to a couple of things. One, I'm for 3D stuff, I'm always going to recommend Unreal. For VR, I'm always going to recommend Unreal. I know some people prefer VR and AR and Unity. For 2D stuff, yeah, I will recommend Unity. Paper 2D. Um, but it, it comes down to what the person is more comfortable with. And what they can work better in. I personally find I work better in Unreal than Unity. And yes, I do use both. And yes, I can code in C Sharp and C++. I just feel more confident and comfortable in C++ for some reason. I'm a weirdo like that. And C++ is easier for me to read and understand and conceptualize. But it is really, really... Um... Depends on the puzzle game. Because I, I, I make puzzle games for fun. Um, in fact, actually, one of the things I want to do when um, UE5 is fully out is I want to do a fan-made remake of Myst because I'm a nerd like that. Um, or a Myst-inspired game, I should say. Um, I would do it in, in Unreal just because I find working with interfaces and the communication between classes much easier in C++ than I do in C Sharp. And to me, that just makes more sense to me. I have heard of Uni Engine and of Godot. I've not tried either. Am I blind? Content menu, top left. Create content. I have Marketplace, Focus Content Browser. Um, there are complete games made in, in Blueprint. There are. Um, was it Visage? Was that the horror game that did um, their game complete? And a really pretty game, too, by the way. No, it wasn't Visage. I don't like Visage. Um, what was it? I wonder if it's because I didn't have Bridge updated. And I thought I had. Um, hang on, I'm going to Google this game. Give me a second. Uh, horror game CIA agent it came out like a couple of years ago cold no, it's not cold fear uh, unreal engine only in BP By the way, Arc Age 2 will be in Unreal 5. Dreamhouse Fortnite is getting up to it. Send you a sacrifice. Yay! I like sending you a sacrifice. Um, can I get this by year? That would make my life so much easier than by name. Sorry, I'm trying to find the game that I know is Blueprint only. That's actually really, really pretty. It's a horror game. It was an indie horror game. It came, That's Unreal Engine. I went to. Here we go. Immortal shell. Eventually. Eventually. Uh, they're satisfactory. I thought Five Nights at Freddy was Unity. Hmm, shows you what I know. I'm not a huge Five Nights at Freddy fan. I don't find that game scary, by the way. I just find it dull. Um... I also thought We Happy Few had started on Unity. I do actually have that game. How do I not know that? Does anyone know what game I'm talking about? Um, I 
Hi. Uh, sorry, I can't see who just came in. Uh, Cookie and Clara. Sorry, the names are under my mic. Um, Unreal Engine uses C++. Now, it does have some C Sharp in it as well. Like, if you actually go into the project file, um, the engine itself is C Sharp, which is kind of, it tickles me. What game am I thinking about? It's a game where you are in the 1970s or 80s. You come to a house with your wife. You're a CIA agent. There's a flashback where I think you and your wife get killed or you kill your wife or something at the start of the game. Is it? It actually might be Visage. It, I might have been right when I said Visage. No, it is not Visage. Visage is the one I did not like. All right, thank you much, um, Chica. Thank you for being here. Uh, da, 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 da. But yeah, I can't remember the name of the game, but there are games that have been... I am terrified by that idea. There are games that have been made in Blueprint only and that are quite quite gorgeous of of games I, I remember watching the streamer play it um no it's not outlast outlast one of the outlast was ue4 one of them was unity if i remember correctly it again it's 1970s the opening scene is a an interrogation scene uh where i believe the wife is killed and then the next scene after that is before the wife being killed and you're driving back to um welcome in adrian by the way you're driving back to you're driving to the house you're moving in with your wife into um you're a cia analyst and you're having paranoid delusions that a, a russian kgb agent is after you and one of the endings of the game is you think your wife is that kgb agent which explains why you kill her there's other endings to the game Um, yeah, I can't remember what that game was, but that's, that was done completely in Blueprint. All right, so I want to work out why the clouds aren't working, because this is bugging me. Yes, yeah, so I'm pointing up at the sky as if th that actually worked. I'm just going to go back into my usual normal set. Oh, that's the wrong one. Go to overall density, go back to my cloud density. The Beast Inside, that's the game. Thank you, Beast Inside, that's it. Uh, also, save, apply. Yes, yes, it is the Beast Inside. That game is made completely in Blueprint. And yeah, there are some optimization errors, but that game is, um, it was made by an indie studio. It was made by, I believe it was their first game they ever made. Because I remember seeing job adverts for people who knew Blueprint. Um, so you know what? If, if that's the first game they've ever made and it has some of those little errors it has, fair enough. They, they showed volumetric additive unlit. Yeah, okay, this is... Is there something new in these settings that have changed? Skeletal mesh, no. By the way, it's actually fairly easy to make. Um, all the issues that people have with making custom characters in, in UE4 are the same issues you're going to have in, in Unity. You're going to need animations. You're going to need a skeleton. You're going to need to rig it. You're going to need to weight paint it. And you're going to need to set up your animation graphs. Those issues remain the same. Um Niagara, Niagara, part Niagara, Niagara, Niagara. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Why well, won't it let me uh, click that? I can click that. I can't click any of these, actually. Huh. Interesting. Mm 
me just save this real quick. And the other thing that is not working correctly that works in UE4 were the widgets. Okay, so there is an update to widgets, by the way. Oh, I played Five Nights at Freddy. I don't... It's not a horror game I enjoy. It's boring to me. And jump scares don't do anything for me, by the way. Um... Yeah, I, I jump scares every so often. Yeah, sure, I'll jump, but meh. Um, for me, it's the the tension, and when I'm just sitting there and not able to do much and have to worry about battery. Yeah, Alien Isolation. I enjoy that as a horror game. That sort of tension is what I, I like, um, and that's when I can get really antsy and agitated. So first, what's really interesting, by the way. Oh, I know why one of the UIs isn't working right. Um, is it now have this play feature, which is kind of cool to see. You can see it loading. Ooh, hey. But yeah, it's still a bit buggy. Um, oh, sorry, I missed something about the lighting simpler in UE4 as a beginner. Um, I haven't looked at the lighting yet in this too much. You know, literally, first time opening this, so I, I'm just still working our way through stuff. Um, I haven't played Darkwood. I've heard good things about it. I want to play it at some point. That is one of the things I, I'm curious about. I've thought about it, um, and the problem with doing an RPG tutorial is when you have, you have to decide it on the system. So, like, you know, if I wanted to do a Dungeons and Dragons system, it's fair enough. You know, it's just Dungeons and Dragons uh, in terms of the system layout, um, stats and attributes and that sort of stuff. Why is All right, so that's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm going to cheat for a minute. I want to see something. I'm going to do something bad. I just am I'm curious. This is the hunger bar. We're going to cast to first person character. We're going to convert this to a pure cast. Uh, um, get hunger. Pop that open. Yep, that's the right thing. Go back to here. Plug that into there. And I just want to see if we go back to our designer here. Interesting. Okay. There's one more thing I want to do. Let's go back here. And... Um, uh, where hunger system let's just go here and we're going to just do this on tick what I'm doing is bad for business but I'm curious about something I think the issue that I'm noticing yeah it's still going to happen However, uh, okay, that completely froze the game up. And to be fair, yeah, that should not be running on a tick. Okay, so I don't know if this UI issue I'm having is unique to me or if it is an actual bug in the engine. But uh, yeah, so um, it isn't how the timers work. It isn't how we get the information. 
there is something genuinely going on here. I'm going to try something else just as an idea here. And this is just to see if there is something that I can figure out causing this issue. We are going to do uh, promote to variable test. I do like the fact that it actually has what it is, the side here. This is nice. The fact that you can change your variable type up here and not have to go uh, down to here it is nice. I like that. That That is, that is cool. That is fun to see. Uh, let's go back to here. Let's grab our test. Get test. Break that, go straight into there, plug test into value, and compile event graph. Okay, let's turn the motion blur back on. Because we know that if we turn motion blur back on, by the way, this will crash if I try to launch the game. We all are aware of this, right? I'm just gonna do a quick save. We will try to run it. It's crashed, by the way. But hey, you know, Quixel Bridge might not be on my thing. <laughs> I think I was supposed to say I was gonna eat a, a, a chocolate thingy each time I crashed. Oh yeah, no, we know that um, that my issue is the motion blur. Motion blur is causing issues. And that's fine. Again, it, it does, yes, please reopen those six assets because sorry for the sound of me like opening a wrapper or pulling something from a mini candy from a wrapper. Yeah, but even with motion blur turned on, we're still getting this issue here. I can be hopeful. All right, so that clearly did not work. To resolve said issue. By the way, you're all getting a preview of the next tutorial series I'm releasing. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's still there in the widget. I've already worked out why one of the widgets isn't working right. By the way, the fact that it doesn't save your layout is a little bit tedious. Also, before I, I try, oh, I just closed all the things I had open. Cause I'm an idiot. Um, also, really quickly, just to see if the content's there. No, I'm still not getting the bridge. Oh, yeah, I'm going to turn off the motion blur again. But I, I think I also have just technically, or technically, I think I might have just uh, resolved one. Thank you. One of the issues. No, it's still stretching this. This is, yeah. Let's go F11 on that. Well, it's a bit better actually. The render targets are more accurate. Lighting's doing weird things. It's not foggy as far as I can tell.
Sun is moving. We're still getting that weirdness. God rays and shadows seem to be working. I'm not sure what it's done. Like, because, okay, so the way this system works. The UMG is different. Like, it's actually different. The something is... Give me a second. I'm going to get the, the UE4 version of this open just so we can do a comparison. There is something visually different there, and I... I because I recorded doing that tutorial like months ago, even though I'm now just editing some of those videos. Again, there's 70 plus videos for me to edit. I'm sorry. Um, let's just pop that open. By the way, hey, look at all the, the random prep files I have. There is something visually different, and I, I think the, it's... I can't tell if it's that one pixel line that I'm seeing around all the icon images or something else, but it is visually different. Boink. There is a line around the icons. And there, you can see there. there's a sizing difference. Also, just as a side note, the clouds work in this version, clearly. And, and the progress bars aren't doing weirdness, clearly. I'm screwing with the clouds, by the way, which is why they're doing weirdness. I'm, I'm re-triggering the cloud effects. I'm pretty sure I just broke the weather, so that's how many times I told it to reset. There we go. See, the clouds work in this version. All right. So there is... It is resizing it for some reason. Let's work out what's going on in that resize, at least. The colors are different. And it's adding, oh, wow. Wow. It, it's definitely resized parts of this in ways I don't get. Um, yeah, that's wrong. I can tell you now that is not what I've done. Sorry, I'm getting open the, um, same widget in the other project. Give you an idea of the difference. Uh, I use Visual Studio. Uh, I, also, I technically I use Visual Studio and um, and uh, Code Light. Uh, Harry, I did earlier and I was eating up the entire thing. Let me just really quickly work out what the heck is going on with the item icon image, and then I'll do it again for you. What's this accessibility stuff? It's... Okay, I'm gonna look into that later. Um... Hmm. Size is the same. That's all the same. That's the same.
that's all the same. I'm not a huge fan of these not being green, yellow, whatever color they were before. That made them actually stand out quite nicely. All right, we're going to make a test one of these so just really quickly to see uh, what the heck is going on. Just start it over again. All right, so we are going to go to desired. From there, we're going to get rid of the canvas panel. We are going to introduce a size box. Size box will have a width and height override of my icon size, or, one, or a little bit over my icon size of 124. And there we'll have our canvas panel. Uh, inside of that, we'll have the um, border, which we anchor to all four corners. And then we go to brush color, and I'm going to use, I'm just going to use a gray. Doesn't really matter the color, I'm just trying to keep everything consistent so that visually I can see if there's anything changing. I'm gonna just double check I haven't missed anything in my other parts of this canvas panel. Is that, yeah, that's right, no padding, border, anchors are right. Okay, so let's go on to our next border because it's actually two borders inside of each other. All right, this one, uh, our anchors, Oh wait, no, wait, hang on. Oh, no, no, there's no second border. Sorry, I'm thinking of the other part of my inventory system. Uh, it's button at this point. All right, so for our button. I've been using uh, Rider and UV4 for some time. Uh, it's great, doesn't uh, seem ready for UE5 yet though, wondering how others are doing with it. I think with UE5 there is um, been some issues with the C++ side of it, and I think that's due to the fact that, well, it's just come out and we need to have the updates for, for, um, thingamajigger, for uh, Visual Studio. Just gonna put this to my yellow color. That is not the color I was looking for. I'm not sure why I put five. Nine, four, there we go. 0 0.6, 0 0.012, there's my yellow. My normal should just be an alpha of zero. There we go. And pressed is the other one I want to change. And we're just going to go to, this is where I wanted the 0 0.51. 0 0.51 by 0 0.51 by 0 0.51. Okay. I do like the fact you can see how many menu layers you're in. That's kind of cool. Makes it a little bit easier to actually see what's going on. Uh, image. Okay. We're going to bum bum. Yeah, we're still getting a extra border that I, I don't quite get what's going on here. I haven't taken that close of a look at um, the C++ side of it. All right, so this isn't an import issue. This is a difference between the engines issue. So um, I got to say, I'm not a fan of the UMGs in Unreal 5. But again, this is early access. I'm not it's probably going to change. And that's fine. I mean, these things, it's an early access. That, that's all we have to say. All right, so we know that the UMG issues I'm having are UE5 related. 
at least for that part and for the weird whatever the heck is happening other part all right yeah, that's good to know uh, let's go back to looking at our clouds oh sorry hang on hang on hang on sorry i said i would do this again um oh i did a standalone i didn't do a, pa a package sorry you're right i was mistaken about that let me get our um There we go, it's a platform. We're going to platforms, not supported by this project. Okay. Uh, packaging settings. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I don't like the new. That, okay, that's just weird. Yoink, yoink. I don't want Lumen. I mean that is what they had set to in the in the yeah. Um All right. Let's package this real quick. And let's get this to launch hopefully. So that's why it was saying Lumen only earlier, because it, for some reason, switched my, my thing over to Lumen only. I don't know why. I can't tell you. I'm as equally confused as all of you are. All right. So while we are waiting for this package, I'm going to take a moment and try to figure out what the heck is going on with the volumetric clouds. Because we know that the default volumetric clouds work. So let's just undo that, go to the default. We can see that they work. Let's look at the material here and see if there's something that's been chance the flipping instance. All right, let's go here. Let's undo that change. We're just gonna take a look at their settings here. Um, okay, the editor is frozen again. There we go. What I'm curious about. Okay. Undo. Thank you. Volume additive. Yeah. Apply fogging. Go here, again, again, gotta remember not to open the instance. Let's pop this open. Right, I'm not sure why volumetric clouds aren't working. I, I can't tell you. Let we'll us turn that off for now. See if that addresses the issue. Oh, we can't actually save that now. But what we can do. Let's open that back up and reset some of the values that should make the clouds actually appear. There we go. And this is overall density. This is our cloud density. Again, I need to not hit save. I just need to hit apply because I can't save while it's packaging. It's gonna give me an error message. It's gonna lock up for a moment, then give me an error message. <laughs> Give me the error message, please, so I can, you know, do things and stuff and junk.
it, that would be lovely, unreal. That would be truly, truly lovely. Wow, I don't know if you can hear my computer in the background, by the way, but again, uh, huh, 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 huh. Whew, it's making uh, some racket, like some serious racket. All right, yeah, there is that error, by the way. Just apply. So how is this going? I mean, I have mixed feelings on it. I mean, it's clearly still a work in progress. UMGs don't seem to be working well. Um, I don't like where the pla packaging uh, thing is. I don't like that for some reason I don't have uh, bridge. I don't get why I don't have bridge. I do like some of the differences in how the menus are laid out. I do like the color scheme much better, honestly. I don't like it doesn't save um, the content, uh, sorry, your, your window layout. I don't understand why um, things I know are working in 2.6 aren't working here. And again, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of the material and UMG side of things are a bit wonky. I don't know. I, I think not having motion blur has led to some issues. This is going to crash again. Oh, wait, no, it didn't. Like, without motion blur, this does not move as smoothly. Again, the fact there are no clouds gets me. Some of the UMG changes are just bizarre. I do like the landscape uh, foliage painter tools. I think they are much smoother in this version of the engine than in previous versions. Um, but I think it is early access. I think it is buggy right now and that's fine. It's early access. The chance to look at the tools. Um, so while we're waiting for this to continue package, it's oh hey there we go. Oh no, that's not what I'm waiting for. I'm gonna leave that up for a moment. Anyone see it? Anyone? I know the uh, stream is slightly behind where I'm at, so I'm, I'm kind of sitting here in silence just waiting for someone to type the word no into the chat. By the way, uh, you aren't the first person to say it's there. I know it's supposed to be there. Oh, no, 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 Jay, it's not crashed once on me. It's not had a single crash of any sort. Yeah, a lot of people are able to see it. For some reason, I can't. And I don't know why. <laughs> There's no documentation around these sort of issues yet. Uh, that is my own water. Well, technically, I'm using Unreal's uh, normals that have been around since, like, 4 point ever. Um, if it, there's some glitch in my install, which also might explain why I can't have motion blur on, or if, um, yeah, everyone's here. I, I did check bridge earlier, but I'll, I'll bring bridge back up. So I still actually have bridge open the other window. Uh, 
Uh, not yet. I literally, by the way, David, I literally finished uh, downloading and installing 30 seconds before I went live. I was actually sitting there for the last nine minutes of the uh, timer going, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. I, I did update the plugins, and I re-updated the... Um, hey, MetaHuman's been moved in here. Cool. I didn't realize I moved MetaHuman into here. Or any of my MetaHumans. I only made two. Hey, you know what? There they are. There are my two MetaHuman tests. Um, I don't think I did anything with this one. I think I just made it. Oh, uh, look for plugins in, um, in Bridge or in Unreal. Cause I'll tell you in Unreal, there are no uh, plugins for it. I've looked. However, as a quick note, I am bookmarking the sand and I'm bookmarking the... Oh, never mind. I thought it was a particular sand. I wanted to take a look at a particular one, but no. Um, oh, sorry, Alex. I was being utterly, utterly sarcastic. Like the first hour of this uh, looking at um, UE5 was figuring out how not to get it to crash and why was it crashing. Um, yeah, honestly, I'm David, my, my personal opinion, I think 4.23 is the best version of Unreal I've dealt with. I want two, exactly two features from Unreal 2.6 into, uh, 2.3. And that is, I want the sky atmosphere, which is actually introduced in 2.5. And I want the updated version of volumetric clouds introduced in 2.6, not the 2.5 version, because that Oh my God, the 2.5 version, while it works, is a resource hog. Um, I think it's actually prettier than the 2.5 default version, to be fair, but it is a resource hog. Um, and by the way, if you don't know what I mean, it's the Volumetrics plugin one. That's what was introduced in 2.5. You can get it in earlier versions of the engine, but it is, again, a resource hog. Um, but 2.6's two, cloud system, put that in 2.3, put the sky atmosphere in 2.3, and I think you have the, it's still packaging this damn project. I think you have the best um, system in terms of anything that Epic's had to offer. Uh, outside a sky atmosphere, like I, 2-3 to 2-4, to outside of dealing with some bugs, I don't see much of a difference. When I say dealing with some bugs, I mean they added bugs into 2-4 in my experience. I have more problems with 2-4. 2-5. Uh, Actually, two four you have Niagara, I guess. Two five um, with the updates to Niagara, again, yay. Two six, I, I want the two six version of Niagara also in two three. Yes, I know you can get Niagara in two three. Don't get me wrong, I know that is an option. I just don't enjoy the two three version of Niagara. And yes, there are differences in the versions. I actually sometimes find there are differences within versions of Unreal, like the prep file for um, the survival tutorial series, which is what this is an import from. Um, uh, it, it is messy and and weird. Whereas in the test file, in the prep file, the file I keep to the other window when I do a recording for any of the tutorials, that one, it, it looked normal. All the things in the right spot. Um, any news about control rig and modeling? Yes, there has been some news um, that I've seen uh, with regards to modeling. I haven't actually particularly looked at control rig because I don't use control rig. Um, and when you say modeling, just to clarify, I just wanna make sure, do you mean character modeling and bringing models in and like how MetaHuman's gonna work in UE5 or do you mean um, modeling in uh, Nanite? In terms of the new the new nanite system they have put in, put in place because uh, that is something i haven't looked at yet and we're going to look at that now actually <laughs> so we're going to find out together on nanite but if you mean on metahuman yes there have been there was a post i saw earlier today in their documents around this i'm trying to get it back on my screen there are also new animation features by the way included sorry i'm trying to get um, oh, yeah, they actually do have something on Control Rig, too. Let me get Control Rig up for you so I can uh, just tell you what they've said. So 
So it is in plugin, so let's just go over there. It looks like it's the same old control rig as from before. Yep. So you, it's experimental like before. Um, I'm just trying to see what they have in terms of if they've made changes to it. Modeling inside the editor. They've talked about it. No, it looks like the control rig setups are exactly the same as in 2.6. And what I'm thinking about when I'm looking at this, yeah. Um, what I'm looking at this when I look at the control rig documentation they have up is it looks like it's just a port from the older version of the engine. Um, it At least that's what it looks like to me. I'm not seeing differences between this and UE5, or sorry, UE4. I'm just searching to make sure I've not missed anything. There are no documented changes that I can see with regards to any, any differences on the control rig. Um, Someone asked earlier about full body IK, by the way. Um, it looks like that actually is going to be a node with, so this is the difference. Okay, so, so there is a difference with control rig. I, I am mistaken. Uh, full body IK, uh, which is gonna be called FBIK, so full body immersive uh, kinematic, will be, so um, trying to figure out where to get access to this is going to be included within the control rig editor. So the control rig editor itself, this thing here, is the same as previous versions of Unreal. However, they're including full body IK, or full body immersive, FBIK, sorry. Uh, FBIK will be a node within the control rig. So you should have a moderate understanding of control rig before using it. I'm reading from the documentation, by the way, as I speak to you. Um, you will have to enable the plugin. So if we go to full body, by the way, just to show that is not the Epic Water, that is not enabled. You'll have to activate um, full body IK. And I'm just trying to see anything interesting in here about it. I mean, there's some really good documentation on the nodes. Yes, yes, it is a plugin. It's right there. But it's you have to. It's a node within the um, control rig to get access to that node. You have to activate the plugin. For anyone who's doubting what I just said, I am actually reading this directly from Epic's documentation. And it looks like they've moved motion warping into, um, which again is a plugin you have to activate. Um, I'm trying to see if you can do this outside of, uh, and so they've updated um, animation montages with motion warping so you can adjust the root motion of the character more easily. I think this will be useful um, down the road, actually. For me, at least. Sorry, I'm talking about myself when I say I think this will be useful down the road. <laughs> just thinking about a, a tutorial series I want to do, and I'm just looking at how this works, and this, this actually might be something I want to include. I'm trying to find a good example of what how motion warping looks in the final product. But the link on um, on their documentation, on Epic's documentation, here we go. So, really? Open, open, thank you. So this is with motion warping activated. And over here is motion warping disabled. So yeah, there has been a minor update, or minor, a fairly large update to um, 
to the control rig. As for modeling within the engine, I have not seen anything in particular. The only thing I've seen have been uh, comments on updates to MetaHuman inside of UE4, UE5. Gonna have to take me a bit to get used to saying UE5 instead of UE4. Um, yeah. So let's take a look at, at um, there, are, there are two main features I'm really curious about myself. One is the asynchronous or async tick for physics, or, for physics um, and the new physics fields. That's one thing to me, it's physics. And the, um, actually there's three things I'm interested in. The new world building features and the nanite or whatever it's called. I'm also interested in the um, Lumen, but let's take a look at Nanite together real quick. So um, I'm not entirely sure how this is gonna work. So I'm going to, um, Just gonna grab this real quick, our landscape. I just wanna see if I can force, you know what, this package is not loading. Cancel. Yeah, I don't care, I'll deal with that later. I wanna see if we can do Nanite on uh, landscape. No, we can't. Can we do Nanite on this? Okay, so it looks like we can't do nanite on that. How about on the static mesh component? Nope, okay. So uh, fortunately I have some test static meshes floating around somewhere, give me a moment. And we'll just play with nanite with that for a moment. So the way you get nanite to work is you have to actually tell it to build a, um, Actually, hang on. I'm, I'm curious. Can I tell it to build Nanite for this one? No. All right, so let's go find one of our static meshes. Uh, do I have any? Yeah, okay, we're not building Nanite for that. Or meshes, foliage, grass. Let's build the Nanite for the grass. So let's enable Nanite for the grass. Let's see what happens with this. Let's find our... That might have been a poor choice, actually, because that's foliage. I am kind of curious what happens. So we have Nanite enabled. Um, auto zero. Is it still compiling the shaders for that? Because there's no, no things going up there. Yeah, that's what I just did. Um, you can actually import Nanite though, when you when you do it, when you import a file, you can tell it to build Nanite. You then, once you've enabled it, have to make sure that it's actually um, enabled in the details panel. Again, coming directly from the Epic documentation. Unless the documentation I'm reading is out of date. All right, let's see what actually happens now that we've done that. Our grass is not loading back in. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that with a uh, static, with a um, not static match, with a foliage type. Let's just grab this massive cliff, which doesn't have a working material, so we're not gonna. do oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do that.
curious why it's killing the textures. That is the one thing I'm not seeing in the documentation. Why is this killing textures? Use high poly detailing uh, rather than baking into normal map textures. Virtual textures are not required with Nanite, but are highly recommended. All right, so we'll just turn this into a virtual texture for a moment. That's the material. Yeah, I'll, we're, um, uh, deformation not supported, but limited to skeletal animations, morph targets, world position offset, and spline. The following materials with the following settings cannot be assigned to nanite. Any blend mode besides opaque. Okay, cool. That answers that question. Let's just uh, apply changes there. Let me see if there's anything in here where I know there are no masks involved. That is not what I wanted. Let's go to the photo scan master actually. Opaque, we'll use whatever tree uses you. You are vegetation debris. So static mesh is foliage, trees, you. Let's put you in the world. There we go. So we have nanite activated on this thing. Don't think I have uh, physics enabled as default for the st for the static meshes, so we're just gonna get one a little bit farther away. Hit play. Go full screen. Get rid of the rain. Get rid of the rain again. Come on, stop raining. Wow. Okay. Um, that's yeah. I I don't know. I hit the wrong button. Shit. Okay, let's try that again. Headsets coming off my head, which is driving me crazy. Wow, okay, that was a small tree according to the thing. And there goes my radiator that needs bleeding. All right, so. Honestly, I've lost about 30 frames with this in general. I will say the level of detail on, on said static meshes. I mean, it's a small static mesh, but I mean, I can see the LODs on, on things changing because I know where to look for my LOD changes on this map. Mostly I spent ages mapping out those sort of things. But I'm not seeing much change on, on those with the Nanite activated. It's kind of cool. So I think if you're working with um, bounce of UE5, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fighting with UE5. I think if you're working with Nanite, you need to be mindful of the materials you're using. Again, it can only work with opaques currently, which is problematic. Um, 
because um, what I really want to work out work with with is on uh, my masked stuff. Uh, just gonna hit play again real quick. I want to make sure my grass was loading in. Yeah, my grass is loading in. Okay. Uh, so that's a bug from uh, 4.25 onwards. It's carried over. That's kind of uh, annoying. If you know what bug I'm referring to, the fact that grass isn't loading um, in certain areas on particular components, but is loading on other components is an error oh sorry that started in um 4.25 and got worse in 4.26 in my opinion all right so that nanite stuff is lovely and working and let me grab the one that's way up there we all right let's get rid of that little sucker Let's see what other uh, virtual shadow maps. Let's see how this works. So meant to oh, that works been particularly um, no. Let's, uh, let's let's you know what we can do. We we can take the foliage editor and place thousands on the map. That sounds fair. It's actually not a bad idea. Let's just test it. I was looking more to see, you know, on a single distance thing, and you've raised a good point. So much everything else is unchecked. Here we go. Uh, all right. That's 400 of those nanite uh, thingamajiggers. And there is 1,240. That's my FPS is now sitting at a lovely, uh, well, 14 when I said that. Funny part is I'm getting better FPS right now. Holy crap, I'm actually getting better FPS right now. Oh, okay. Um, I am very confused. Okay, now we're back to, I'm still confused. I should not be getting better FPS. That really shouldn't be. Even, it doesn't matter if I'm using Nanite or not. I really shouldn't be getting better FPS because, um, I've just added a thousand of something in here. Interesting. Okay, let's turn Nanite off. Disable. Let's see if I notice a performance change. Again, I'm honestly still confused why my performance has gotten better. Adding <laughs> a thousand of these in. With Nanite turned off, I'm getting about the same FPS. I'm uh, keeping between. Between. Uh, sorry, I was turning the rain off. Um, 70 and 80 until I get to certain points where I hit 30 to 40. Uh, welcome in, awesome mobs. But yeah, so nanite or not, it doesn't seem to be doing much in terms of performance. So I'm a bit perplexed by that one. By the way, sorry for the bad audio on the footsteps. That is free audio because, again, it's for a tutorial, which means I am focusing on uh, making sure that the assets used in the tutorial are free. All right, so Nanite didn't seem to really affect that much. You know what I'm curious about? Honestly, let's just go find the uh, leaves. So just turn this on to both, actually. Oh, nope. Okay, that apparently is a mask, not an opaque. I think the material is the same for both of these because I couldn't see a difference. Yeah, the material is the same, so we can't use that. Again, if you're using Nanite, be mindful. Let's add in, let's just add in a few more thousand of these things. All right, there are now 4,000 of these branches on my map. How is my performance staying better? And again, Nanite not activated right now.
I don't understand. I mean, I will accept the weirdness that is happening here. But I do not understand. Um, let me now turn Nanite back on with those. Let's go back here. Enable Nanite. And let's take a look again. Yeah, I'm getting the same, about the same FPS. I'm getting the same latency. I am not seeing a performance difference. between these. Okay, interesting. I mean, I could have been better not having an hour of me just dealing with the fact that UE5 kept crashing. Um, I mean, it is, it's interesting to see, the, and by the way, um, as we're, thank you for the compliment. It's interesting to see the bugs we're running into. And I, I don't know if other people who are um, currently working with the engine are running into the same bugs or not, but it, it's, it does make this a bit of an interesting experience. Because, you know, this is the first time a lot of us have taken a look at, at the engine. I mean, I know I'm one of the only people apparently having this no mixer thing. Yeah, I, I, that's why I want to see if I can get Nanite to work on the landscape. Yes, there is. Uh, so if you open up the the item right there, there's a Boolean checkbox. Um, so currently Nanite is enabled. So if I click that and then hit apply changes, it's now disenabled. Disabled. <laughs> Sorry, my brain just did not speak words correctly. Blah. Um... By the way, the next thing I want to look at, which is the virtual shadow maps, are meant to work with Nanite. I'm just going to turn these on. Just, just we're going to see if we can break my computer just a tiny bit here. So we need to go to our um, engine settings, or not our engine settings, our project settings. By the way, another thing I really don't like. I, yeah, where are my project settings? I, I don't like having to go back to the map to get the project settings. That, that's that is another UI change I am not a fan of. I mean, it's a small complaint, but it, yeah. Again, it could be worse. And you know, maybe it's just somewhere I didn't see. Yeah, that's a fair point. You know what? He, you know, raised a fair point as well. Let's go to uh, a vantage point where I can see as many of them as possible. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna... Can I paint them on? T oh, no, I want them on the water, not under the water. Actually, you know what? <laughs> we'll just put as many down here as we can. <laughs> We're now at 10,000 of these, by the way. All right. Uh, think oh um oh i'm not in that mode there we go plane collision i do like the fact that this is auto collapse that just makes my life a life a little bit easier um this is the right material thing right yeah it is okay Physics, collision preset, no collision. <laughs> Hit play. Oh, I'm just gonna stand down under the water uh, looking at a whole thing of these. Uh, can Nanite be turned down in visualization? That is a good question. Um, I don't know. I didn't see that in the documentation, but we'll take a look in just a moment. So um, I'm pretty sure I can see at least a thousand of those out there. And it is a very fairly low, simple mesh we're working with. So God only knows what happens with a, a more important mesh. By the way, 
I probably should turn the uh, air sound off uh, when I'm under the water. And again, this isn't the actual water actor we're going to be working with. And again, even here, as we're moving through our field of um, branches, it's still not that bad. I gotta say, there's something really surreal about this. Sorry, I'm not trying to walk off the edge of the map. What I want to do is take a look at it from this angle where I can see... I want to go over this way, actually. Then I'm going to walk off the edge of the map, by the way. Yeah, it's still not doing too bad. Alright, now let's walk off the edge of the map. I feel like there's some comment to be made about that lighting change. Um, right. Next, what I want to do is just turn on our um, engine rendering um, shadow, 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 lumen. I'm going to turn on our virtual shadow maps. I'll do the same thing uh, with penguins. I don't have any penguins. Oh, uh, I'd say it's pretty surreal all night. Okay, so with that done, let's uh, close that out and let's find our directional light or light source. And what we're gonna do is we wanna find our um, source radius, I think, is what the documentation said. Just double check. Shadow rays are distributed on the light source radius or source angle. Okay, let's just first off, go back up this way. So source angle. So I'll see if I can see the difference in the shadows here. Yeah, I kind of like how that looks. Uh, for the potential UE5 open world gamers, how much uh, RAM would we ideally need? Um, that really does depend. Because you I mean you can do an open world low poly, Zelda. And, and you probably don't need that much. You can do try to do high fidelity, ray traced, um, high poly worlds like cyberpunk. And you're gonna need a crap ton more. It really depends on what you're aiming to do. Um, yeah, they, they did have a, uh, there is a lot of comments on uh, the virtual shadow maps that, um, yeah. What I can't see, I'm just going to search for it, is the source radius, because that is going to be, um, Oh, it's source. It's source angle on directional lights. I was looking at the right thing. So zero is going to be the more. Jesus, that does not look nice up there. Um, let's have a massive bloom effect. No. Go back to Jesus. Um. That's terrifying. Okay, so it's source angle, and I kind of want the sun to actually look like a sun. So 
So, I mean, that shadow is allegedly supposed to be better. I'm not sure I see it yet. I'm not sure if it looks better to me or not. Oh no, that shadow is definitely much better. Oh, that, that shadow is significantly more realistic. I mean, the fact the tree is moving is a bit kind of weird, but hey, it adds, it adds to it in terms of this test. I mean, just just look at you can see the individual leaves on that on that branch, like. And I'm I'm still at 60 FPS, impressively enough. Um, I I'm gonna give it kudos for that. Let's go over to a little bit more of a dense shadow area. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, I need to actually find where it is on the map now. Um, I mean that that was yeah, that was honestly kind of sweet. Uh, you will not I will not deny that. And the fact that it was still running at 60 FPS there. Um, yeah, that was I gotta say gorgeous. This is simply just gorgeous to see that. Um, I think the the shadow map, if you have a computer that can run it, or virtualized shadow maps, that is. Um, yeah. I think the, the problem with getting a good virtualized shadow map, though, is you have to balance how the sun actually looks in the sky, uh, which is why I said, hang on one second, I want to test something. I want to, it's in the actors, it's in, nope, that's my it's items. It is equipment, it is head mounted flashlight. There's one somewhere under the foliage there, by the way. Uh, we're just going to drop a few of these into the world in case I can't find it. And then what we're going to do is pop open our character. Um, <laughs> first person character. We are going to go here. And um, what am I looking for? Local light source. Oh, it's only point light is going to work with, isn't it? Attenuation radius, source radius. No, source radius is zero. Okay, so we should get the effect that I want to test. Let's go back to full screen here, or test mode, full screen. Let's grab one of these things. I might want to disable the weather effects just in case. And let's go over to, I mean, the lighting on the trees, honestly, is much better than it was before. I just want to go over this way where I know there's a, yeah, again, just, just the, the, the way that light is coming through there. I mean, look at that shadow along the grass. Just in that area right there. I mean, that is simply beautiful. I, I think the, the if you can get it to work, again, you, you can see the individual leaves. All right. Uh, by the way, the weird blurring is because there is a lot of fog and the IES profile did not work well with the fog, apparently. What I want to do is see, you know, the flashlight is not going to change much. I, I am, hang on, we're going to disable the weather real quick. Uh, dynamic weather system is going to be under actors. Weather system, dynamic weather system. I just want to disable this part. Uh, that part, that can stay on because that actually matters. And disable that part. All right, let's try that again. I believe with the default settings, we should not have any issues we're still getting a bit of fog. What's going on with that? All right, let's find uh, our fog. Differential height fog, set that to zero. Which gives the water such a weird look. 
Grab that. Come on, really? Thank you. Again, I'm not sure why it's stretching in this version. There we go. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And let's go to full screen. I mean, the lighting, I'm not sure if it's the shadows now or what, but the lighting is just so much better um, in UE5. I am honestly kind of impressed by that. Should have disabled the hunger timer so we can actually just watch the uh, light move through the trees during the day. In fact, actually, what we'll do next is do a simulate version of this if we can and take a look at that effect. God, the shadows are on the base of the tree in this dark area right along where I have the light shining. I've turned that off. That, I'm honestly surprised. And, you know, I'm okay, I'm down to 40 FPS there, but. That isn't, yeah, wow. Okay, so um, well, we've seen the effect of, of the shadow map. Let's just, or virtual shadow map. Let's just try one other thing. Um, oh, someone asked me earlier, can we see, um, the Nanite uh, is a visualizer. And I, yes, we can. So you can see the uh, trees off in the distance, by the way, that are nanite trees. Um, kind of like the, the mask went down there. It's kind of, yeah. So, um, yep, there's the visualizer for the nanites. And just because I know there's more down there and you can see the clustering so we have the near uh, medium far distance which are being covered up by the other instances so yeah you can actually get uh, nanite oh go away I don't want the nanite over the lid thank you um, you can get visualizations for the nanites now what I want to do is I want to go to see if we can get a simulate mode we can, awesome. And I want to take a look at how the sun impacts on um, the world. Oh, so what is this button? This is a new. Oh, hey, if you're in simulate mode now, you can switch over to um, game mode. That's cool, that's new. It's kind of nice to have that feature mixed in. So not only can you eject in play mode now, you can eject, you can uh, possess and simulate. I'm actually going to turn that off and just do redo the simulate because, yeah. Let's go full screen, and we'll do slow mo if I can spell slow mo right. Uh, five. We're just going to kind of pay attention to the shadows as the tree as the light moves across the sky. Yeah, again, I'm honestly impressed by um, the virtual shadows. We'll take a look at Lumen next. The yellow Ds are a bit off, but okay. Oh wait, no, this is the version where I've not taken care of the yellow Ds of the, of the foliage yet. I'm just gonna speed up the slow-mo a bit. Uh, let's go 500. I want to see the shadows retreat on this side. I mean, that is is not, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Sorry for the noise as I move. Um, okay. We're not near sunset yet. Again, given that you can see the individual tines of those leaves, 
All right, let's move to this side of the island and let's watch the sunset together. It's so romantic. I'm just going to, uh, oh, apparently I have to not do it that way. I want to get uh, a little bit of the orange and then I'm gonna slow down our slow-mo. The other thing I wanna see is, are my stars showing up? Are my Q maps for my stars showing up? And again, you get that nice little effect there. With the, that, it, that lighting actually is, yeah. All right, so my key map for the stars are showing up. You can see them starting there. I'm going to slow this down to uh, default speed. There we are. And again, we're, we're staying around 60 to 70 frames. I mean, when I'm looking at the really dense area of all the nanites, it gets a bit lower. There we go. Of course, right now, in I know based on how the um, transition from day to night works that it is actually doing a lot of calculations in the background. So it's going to eat up a bit of the frame rate. There is something about that lighting there that's different. Like there's this more sort of scattering clearness that isn't in the older version of Unreal. They've changed something here. Let's take a look at the shadows. Okay, we've lost most of the shadows, of course, but. Hey, um, Azura, are you still there? I'm just curious what, what sort of computer you're run, you were trying to run it on. Hey, Cry, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, and thank you for watching the videos. I remember seeing a few of your comments. Um, okay, so, oh. Okay. I'm not sure if anyone else is seeing that, but look at this tree. All right. See, on the left-hand side of this tree, there's three errors going on, by the way, right now. And I don't know what's causing them. So look at that left-hand side I just outlined a second ago. You can see it on all the trees on the left-hand side. I mean, if I go this way, you'll see it on the right-hand side. So that is new. The We're getting a lot of bleed, and I'm not sure if, why we're getting bleed. See, the weirdness of this tree stuff, I've seen this before, but I've only ever seen it in um, the clouds which aren't showing, which aren't working in Unreal 5. Um, yeah, Zora, I was curious, what, what sort of computer were you trying to run your uh, virtual shadow maps on? And there's a sphere reflection cube, re or yeah, sphere, um, uh, reflection sphere really standing out. You can see, I know where my spheres are, by the way, on my map. You can really see the difference there. Now, the map is also really light. This shouldn't be this light. Actually, potentially I have accidentally yeah, turned off the changing of my lighting. Let me just double check that. That was in the dynamic weather system. Yeah, no, it should have gone. Okay, so let me just try something. We're gonna use the control L method here. Okay, so uh, the lighting is definitely a bit off. You can see this here, reflection cubes, by the way. Um, hmm, <laughs> let's go to my skylight. So it, it should automatic, uh, upgrade it a while back to Ryzen. So we, uh, yeah, the 1060 might be the uh, cause there. So let's just see if Lumen affects uh, the issue I'm notice, noticing. And that also means you can get rid of those uh, sphere capture thingies, but um, reflection thingies. But the fact that um, 
we're getting this bleed is really painful. All right, so let's go back to our project settings. Uh, uh, Krylo, how far did you get in the um, in the RTS tutorial series, by the way? And let's go over to rendering. If you don't mind me asking, I am curious about where people get at with these sort of things. And in rendering, we want to go to dynamic global illumination. So dynamic global illumination. We are going to change this from none to, wow, <laughs> ray trace has been deprecated. Use Globin, Lumen instead. Okay, let's go to Lumen. Lumen reflections are designed to work with Lumen Global Illuminations You have uh, and have been automatically enabled. Uh, Interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah, I thought I no, I enabled that in the preview project. That's one of the updates we're doing for um, the second optimization tutorial for the series. Okay. Uh, and I just need to. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, mesh distance. Let's turn that on. Restart now. All right, uh, we are not gonna save any of this outside of our island map, our weather, our deadly, our, our, our debris. Those are the three things we'll save. Hey, I, I know where you can get, I know my, my local store, my, my physical local computer store has um, uh, three RTX and 390s for sale. Just let me know if you want one. You don't want to know the price, by the way. Yeah, I was seriously was walking back from work today. Oh, sorry. I went out for drinks after work because it was the end of something. And uh, I was walking past that store and I saw in there on their countertop an RTX, I'm like, it can't be. And I moved towards the door, and I, you can see it says 390 at that distance. I'm like, I'm going in. I want to know how much it cost. Yeah, um, you, you really don't want to know. <laughs> Just put it that way. All right. So um, let's just go to our product settings actually again. Let's go over to rendering. And let's we'll do software, ray tracing, detail tracing. Um, so detail tracing traces against individual meshes distance fields for a highest quality render at higher performance cost. All right, we're gonna go for the more beefy one here. And global tracing, this one down here. You will now go there. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's in the UK, come to the UK. It's in one of the poorest areas of the UK. They have three, of course it costs two grand per card. Um, so global tracing traces against the global distance field for fastest tracing at reduced quality. All right. So we'll leave it the beefier one. Again, we're trying to stress test this a tiny bit, see what we can get away with here. Um, use hardware ray tracing when available. Uses uh, supported hardware to trace rays against scene geometry and otherwise defaults to Lumen software. Two more years until a new card for this cowboy. Fair enough. Um, to Lumen software ray tracing when these criteria are not met. Um, Support hardware uh, ray tracing is required to update the hardware ray tracing scene. For early access, tens of thousands of instances are supported and performance largely depends on your system. For example, some platforms recommend fewer than 40K instances and no more than 100K animated vertices. Improvements will be made in further releases. Uh, 
Um, are you using nanite with them? Because <laughs> I found that out the hard way. Leaves, by the way, um, are are masks typically. So uh, yeah. Um. So support hardware ray tracing enables support video card supported video cards RHI and operating systems to ray trace against scene. And you know what? Let's just do support uh, hardware ray tracing. Jesus Christ! Uh, use hard use hardware ray tracing when available. Yeah. And generate missed, uh, mesh distance fields, which we already done, by the way. Distance fields represent for individual static message. Man, we've already done that. All right. Let's restart one more time. And take a look at what we got. I am honestly surprised my 3070 isn't on fire right now. I mean, we did add, what, 10,000, I think, at one point of those things, or 7,000 of those branches. Oh, come on, load. Jesus. I will give you a cookie to load faster. Do you want a cookie? Cookies taste good. So I, yeah, I think we're a bit uh, far away from doing tutorials in um, in uh, UE4. I think it'll be fun to play around with. I think uh, what I will be doing is actually recording videos on the use of, um, of some of these things. I'll be taking things we've done today, like looking at how to activate our, um, our, our, our shadow thing, which I'm not blinking on the name of, the, um, Jesus, the virtualized or virtual shadow maps. Uh, looking at our lumen, which we're sitting here waiting for this thing to load, um, and do a bit with our um, nanite. Talk about the UI changes and the interface changes. Again, uh, Andre or uh, Andre, uh, have you are you using nanite on your um, uh, on your leaves? And we're gonna need to make a couple of other changes. Yeah, the document. There's some documentation out for it. In fact, actually, it's what I'm reading from for a lot of this. Is I'm I'm using the UE4 document, UE5 documentation. I will post that into the chat, by the way, so you guys know what I've been reading from. Oops, sorry, that is not the correct link. That is the correct link. Uh, I accidentally hit the plus key on my uh, number pad when I hit enter. <coughs> Well, that is the documentation I've been reading from. I've also been reading from a few of the posts they've done on the forums uh, for some of the, the content questions and direct, direction questions I've received just because I have been keeping appraised of that. Um, somehow I missed that there was going to be a release today of UE5. That threw me for a loop. Um, so open up the static mesh for the trees and leaves. And on the right-hand menu in the detail side, it should say uh, there will be a checkbox next to Nanite. If it's checked yes, Nanites are checked with a thing digger, then Nanites active. Ooh. I am so sorry, everybody who I just deafened. Uh, I really do hope the real and the VRAM usage for the full release, uh, there's around 70 megabytes added that I didn't seem to be able to disable um, with any CVARs. 
That's the one thing I can't find anything mentioning in these documentations are the new C-Vars. I found one. No, it wasn't even a C-Var, actually. It was one of the Innie settings, uh, which technically is, there's going to be a C-Var for it. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't see any of the C-Vars, and I, I'm a bit concerned by that. I might have just been overlooking it, because I am reading through the documentation quickly as I do this. Um, and, and you're welcome for doing this on live. I mean, it is kind of embarrassing when I run into issues. I say embarrassing. It's because I tend to, when I do my tutorials, have... I still make issues in my tutorials, by the way. I tend to have the finished product sitting on the other screen. And then I'll take that finished product and I'll, I'll duplicate what I did previously uh, on the main screen. Um, again, as some of my Patreon supporters know, there are times where I make mistakes. Because I do live recordings in front of them that they can come and watch. One of them, who made the icons for the product I'm using as the example piece here... Uh, was sat with me for four hours while I try to find why my water material looked different between the two files. There was one setting I missed. One. And I went through that thing like 50 times with her. And I, I like, we both, we, so I, I'm not sure if we both just overlooked it or she pointed it out to me and I said I, 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 I didn't see it. I, I'm... Pretty sure neither of us noticed until I randomly um, scrolled down, and I think we both kind of went, oh, at the same time, and went, yeah, there is the issue. Man, okay, I'm doing this on an M dot, uh, MV, sorry, M dot 2 NVMe thingy, and it's taking ages to compile those shaders. Then again, we did just ask it to, to um, yeah. Uh, Azir, one thing you might want to look at uh, is the memory insights section. I'm not sure if there's anything that's going to be useful in there for you. Um, but there is some new ways to look at what's happening in your memory. To look at actually at the full uh, call stack, that's kind of cool. That's going to eat up a lot of memory just doing that, but okay. Three shaders left, by the way. Three shaders left. Two. Two shaders left. Two. One shader left. Going once. Going twice. 987 shaders left. You all just looked down to make sure that didn't say 987, didn't you? I'm a bit of a jerk. But yeah, you can query your data now um, and record a session as well. Um, I mean, technically you could do that in the previous version as well. Jesus Christ, this one shader is taking longer than the last uh, three shaders, or last two shaders before it. There we go. Initializing, something, something else initializing, something, something else initializing, something, something else loading. Oh, come on. Load. I want to see what the uh, this Lumen system looks like. Set up material to output, bent normal custom output. So additional notes, the following are some additional considerations to keep in mind while working with Lumen features in your product, projects. Lumen lighting update speed. I'm just terrified at how slow this is loading, Jesus. I'm gonna probably recommend we take a um, Hi, Nico. Um, so your question, would the uh, UE5 demo work on a GTX 1050? Um, as it ran in their demo, I don't think so. If I am understanding their documentation right and based on what other people have said, I don't think you could get the full demo to run the way they did. Now, there is a caveat to everything I just said, though. I think you... <coughs> Obligatory, not COVID, cough. I think you could get it to run. 
I think you would need to disable some of the lighting features they have active. Because they had all the, the, the new lighting and nanite, nanite features activated. Um, and based on what... Um, on what a couple of people are saying earlier with their systems and trying to play with the um, virtual shadows um, and the lumens that they were having issues getting it to run even on um, some more... Whoa! Okay, to give you an idea, I just went, whoa. And that's because I'm lagging. I'm, I'm really tempted to just see what this says. So, um... With lumens activated on a 3070, and Jesus Christ, the billboards are messed up there, there, and there, I am at 15 frames, and I am still compiling 14, 1400, or sorry, 14,000 shaders. Oh. Oh, I can feel the thing chugging. Yeah, I'm running on a 3070, um... And I'm 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 chugging, like I'm chugging on a 37. I realize this isn't Valley of the Ancients, which is the project you are all talking about. Um, yeah, no, you're gonna need a lot. You can run the project, but you won't be able to do all the lighting. Um. I like it, it's a, it's the lighting that matters. Also, uh, Stone Skin Medic, uh, Media, uh, Skippy, I have a question for you. Do you like banana? And if you don't get why I said it in that voice, then the answer is no. The voice and how I said it is more important than the question itself. So yeah, I'm, I'm on a 3070 right now. And I'm on, trust me, this is probably a lot less detailed than... <laughs> Then uh, Valley of the Ancients, and I am chugging between t 12 and 24. Um, Jesus, <laughs> those are our nanite branches from earlier. 12 and 24 frames per second there. And uh, right now there are still 13,000 shaders to compile. Yeah, uh, it is. There's no direct link, so I'm just going to bring up Epic real quick, and I'm going to show you where to get it from. So give me one second. So if you want to download it, first, you might need to update your Epic. Yeah, I'm assuming it'll smooth out once the, the compiling is done. So um, in Epic, if you look at the top now, you have this UE5 button, regardless if you update it or not. If you haven't updated, you'll get a, a message here saying you need to update, um, and then you just go to Settings. And it's, there'll be a button up here that says update and restart or restart and update. And then if you scroll down, um, it's get sa sample project showcases new features, Valley of the Ancient, get sample. And then I'll tell you, this is a large sample. It's like 11 gigabytes. I haven't downloaded it fully because I came on to do the stream. Um, I came directly from work to do this. Uh, yeah. It's it's not a small sample. Um, I got very, very lucky. And actually, the place I currently... Wow, sorry. I said 11 gig. It's 90... It's 92 gig. Um, and, yeah, they're recommending a 2080. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, with a min spec of a 1080. Um, so, to answer your question... Um, Nathan, my my primary computer crapped out on me, actually. Uh, whilst I was mid doing a backup and upload to my Git and corrupted everything, but uh, it, it completely died. And I took it to a repair store to see if they could recover anything. They couldn't. I did a better job at the recovery. Um, but I, I didn't know that, uh, that, um, that what the damage was i couldn't determine what the damage was in fact they weren't able to determine what the damage was according to all the analytics the computer isn't damaged there is nothing wrong with it they like me have the same issue though where it burnt out six hard drives on them for me i only burnt out three 
um, right away after being plugged in. But according to all the analytics, all the diagnostics possible, and I did the same tests, nothing's wrong with it. There is clearly something wrong with it. Um, yeah, I have two 1080s in there, actually. The 1080s are perfectly fine. Um, and uh, so I, I said to them, you know what, I regardless of what's going on here, I'm probably going to need to build a new computer anyway. Do you have any... Um, any uh, video cards, you know, do, in particular RTX. I'm looking at the time for an RTX 3090. Now, yeah, we have one in stock. Had I called the day earlier, by the way, they had they had a 3090 in stock, and it was at market value. Um, we have one in stock. It's a 3070. You know, gave me the the quote. It's market value. It's the last in my area. Um, by the way, everyone wants a 3090. That same store is now does have now. Three thirty nineties for sale. Sale in quotes. You don't want to know the price they're charging for them. It it costs more than my computer, which has a thirty seventy in it, and two M dot twos, NVE, NVMEs, and two SSDs, and the newest Asus Crosshair uh, motherboard. It, it it costs more than my entire computer put together. But they do have three for sale. Uh, multiple times, oddly enough. Yeah, they have three in stock. I Literally, when I was walking home to do this, um, I had to walk past their store because I went out for lunch or dinner with um, some colleagues to finish uh, what we're doing for the year. And I saw the RTX boxes at a distance through the window. And I'm like, it can't be. It can't. And as I got, like, I literally walked past their front door. Which they have a new Terminator thing in there. And I just turned my head to look at the boxes. I'm like, ooh, pretty RTS boxes. I bet that's 3070. I already have one. I don't care. I'll let my friends know. And I saw the numbers 3090. I'm like, turned around mid step, almost barreled into this woman who was walking right behind me. I'm like, I'm going into that store. Um, by the way, I know I, I don't look tall on this. I'm over six feet. Um, so really tall, bulky guy almost barrels into this woman because <laughs> I didn't know how close behind me she was. Um, and I go to the store. I'm like, how much are they? I'm like, I just, I just want to know how much they are. Yeah, they're over 2,000. They're over 2,000. Yeah, they're just cutting out the uh, scalpers at that point. That was my, my thought, first thought. And I, I bit my tongue because I wanted to be on, on the polite side. Because that is literally what I thought. Oh, you're just as bad as the effing scalpers. And I went, oh, I get it. The chip shortage. Whatever. I'll come back when the chip shortage isn't as uh, nasty. Um, yeah, I, I, I am really, really lucky. I get that I'm lucky. Oh, wow. It's still compiling shaders. Oh, sorry about how long this is taking, guys. Uh, I do notice the frame rate has gone up at least above 20 until we turn around and look at this uh, nightmare. And we're not even done. We have more to do with this. <clears throat> now, I will say that um, one thing that is really annoying about this, and I... Every high-end motherboard I've had, I've had one weird issue. Just one. Always one. On my last one, which was an MSI, the, the USB power regulation was nearly non-existent. So it, it, I had to actually buy an extra regulator for my USB sockets or USB ports sockets that I plugged into my PC into a PCI slot so I could actually use, you know, a camera, a mic, a VR headset, everything. Um, and for some reason, it kept shorting the computer out. Like, it, if it wasn't, if I didn't have that in, I would lose the camera. It was like old streams of me where the camera would just die or OBS would just die or something like that. Not like what happened earlier today with my ISP. Um, and that was all due to the USB. There was nothing connected in some of these things as well. And then there was the, um, what CPU do I have? I am using on my current computer a Ryzen 9 3090, uh, 39, Ryzen 9 uh, 3900X. Um, I got an OEM one from uh, 
uh, Scanners, which is a, a, a retailer company up in Manchester. Um, so saved not having to buy a, a box with it, I guess. Um, but on this one, on my, on my Corsair, Asus ROG Corsair 8 Hero um, with my AMD Ryzen 9 3900, for some reason, the built-in Wi-Fi settings don't work right. Like, I, I have a different Wi-Fi system plugged in now. I'm not cabled mostly because of, I can, the stupid construction of houses in the UK. I, I, I get that I live in this country now. I get I live in the UK. But there are just some construction choices here that make zero sense. Yeah, my, my flaky USB, I, I looked it up. It turns out, because that's why I, why I said there's no power regulation on the MSI. It turns out it's a known issue on the MSIs um, where they overload the board with um, USB ports like Asus does. Funny enough, Asus doesn't have this problem. But they don't have uh, something that regulates which well, how much power is being pulled by which USB. So it just it just flow, uh, throws all the power at all of them. And it goes... I can't do this anymore. Bye! And turns off. Um, but my Corsair, my, my Crosshair 8, uh, I, I have the Wi-Fi one. Um, is that, yeah, you said, uh, I think you meant 8, not 9, because, you know, 9 would be an IX, and it's not out yet. Um, it, it, and the Wi-Fi issue is, a, again, a known issue um, with their built-in Wi-Fi system. Which is why I switched over to my Wi-Fi system. However, the other problem with this is Virgin Media sucks ass. By the way, the reason why I'm ranting and doing nothing is I'm still waiting for this to compile. So I would recommend, by the way, taking a bathroom break. Also, if you're in the UK, do not buy an OEM copy of Windows off Amazon. There is a 90% chance it's bootleg. And won't properly work. In fact... Don't buy a full version off Amazon. Just buy it from Microsoft. You're not saving any money. It's bootleg. It won't work. Yeah. Honestly, one of the things I'm going back to the U.S. at some point. One of the things I'm going to do is probably pick up an OEM copy of Windows just so I can get rid of that. True, and apparently there's a, you can get, ooh, sorry for the pop on that, you get a pop filter. You can open this up and you can see what it's doing. I want a 3090 substance painter cries for memory when I paint textures and RAM and memory. See, I am actually going to buy more memory. I currently have uh, 64 gigs. I mean, I'm going to buy two more of the uh, 32 sticks I have and just go up to the 124 just for bragging rights. I've been using the Wi-Fi on it since Nove has seemed perfect to me. Unfortunate year. I honestly think my trouble on my course on my Crosshair uh, Eight is due to um, I will a, a jail um, or sorry jail. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, Jarrell, come to my Discord. I'll tell you why I won't do that. At least not in the UK. Um, I don't want to broadcast that on air. Um, I honestly think the issues isn't with the motherboard and the Wi-Fi settings on the motherboard. Though apparently, again, this is a known issue. But what I have noticed of the people having this issue is they're all in the UK and they're all with Virgin Media. Anyone who I have seen who has this issue... Oh, do you want, you want to give me the discount? Um... I, I didn't get that's what you were implying when you said that. Anyone who I've seen who's had this issue has um, has uh, been in the UK on Virgin Media. Not with BT, not with EE, even though EE sucks. Um, sorry, Kevin Bacon. Why is Kevin Bacon doing... Never mind. I get that people do... Celebrities do ads in countries for their... Yeah, whatever. Um... But I, I honestly think it's a Virgin thing. And again, Virgin claims we don't have to use their modem. Find me one modem in the common modern-day market that uses a coaxial input, and I'll believe you, Virgin. I won't, because I also know that you said you have to have the software on the hub installed. 
which means we have to use your hub because that's proprietary software, you lying sacks of crap. By the way, if anyone here works with Virgin Media, I can't make the symbol I want to make on, on camera. I mean, if you're, sorry, I shouldn't say anyone who works with Virgin Media. If you're a technician who just needs a job, if you work in the call center for Virgin Media, 50% of you can take that gesture. If you're a technician who actually is good at their job and who doesn't try to bullshit their way through stuff, you're fine. If you're not, you, again, that same gesture. Um, yeah. Mine's not done compiling. I guess you weren't supposed to do that if you're using Windows commercially. Uh, I got my Crosshair Hero 8 without Wi-Fi. The only bugs we need at the board is the placement of the chipset cooler. That apparently is a big complaint by a lot of people, and I will say it doesn't bother me too much. Like, it's not the best, but it doesn't bother me too much. Um, with this last 10%, I am going to take a quick step away from the screen just so I can stretch my legs, and then we'll come back and take a look at this. I am going to leave this up so you can all joyously watch the thing go up and up and up. But I'll be back in a moment. I just need to go to the bathroom again, really. back. Uh, coax is standard on TVs. I am talking about coax. Um, crap. Azure, you're right. I forgot to change my uh, encoding to my GPU. Shit, I am, I am, uh, I am streaming off my CPU. Crap. Um, for networking, that's beyond 20. Yep, I know. I know. And, you know, they keep saying the same bullshit claim that you don't have to use their product. Well, that's true. I don't. I can go to somebody else and get better service. But I want my goddamn refund. And I'm on fiber. This is a fiber line, allegedly. Fiber to from the box to the house, maybe. Sorry, I had the camera off for a minute because... Um yeah, I, did, I just need it off for a moment. Don't worry. I I get, um, allegedly, I'm supposed to get 450 MIPS and an upload of about 50 to 75. Um, I get, at best, 30 MIPS download. I do get my upload MIPS, though. Hey, it's uncompiling the shaders. You're right. My thing has gone back up. All right, so the next thing we're going to do now that we've got the um, thingamajigger compiled is we're going to go over to our post-processing volume. And yes, there is a post-processing volume in here somewhere. I think it's under lighting. I am blind. Oh, lighting. It's not open. That's why. And we are going to go into here, and we need to find our global illumination. Yeah, if it's it's fiber it's fiber to the house within the house it is not. No, no, it's it's coax, it's legitimate coax. Like I asked them what the connector was, and they confirmed it's coax. Ouch, Nathan. Ouch. I honestly that that number 
hurts my soul. All right, we're going to turn Lumen on, and we're going to turn Final Gather Distance on here to um, leave it at the one setting just to see what it's like. So I'm following the epic guidance here. For Reflection, we're going to go to Lumen again. We will do Lumen Quality at one. All right. Uh, I've now lost... I, know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I've lost about 20 frames. I've lost about 20 frames doing this. Uh, one thing I am going to do, just so we can say in the character mode. Actually, no, we'll say in simulate. Let's take a look at these shadows. Let's go full screen again. I'm not sure why white dots just showed up everywhere. All right, we are getting the nice shadowing there. Severe, severe reflections are clearly messing with the lumen bit. This is a UK version thing. It's all Virgin Media's like this in the UK. Starlink. Thanks, Musk. Uh, I am under 30 FPS, by the way, right now. If you can't see the FPS counter, I am at 24 FPS with the lumen lighting on. I am going to be completely honest. I can see that there's a difference in the lighting. I, I think the lighting looks better on the leaves. So I'm looking at this spot right here to the left of the uh, center. And also the lighting up there and down here. I do think the lighting on the tree is better. God, look at my frame rate. Um, I, I don't think that this frame rate is, uh, is worth, um, worth the lumen. I, I have lumen enabled, by the way. Um, lumen... Apparently, is not recommended on anything under than uh, 1080s or lower than 1080. Wow. Minimum requirement for the Lumen projects, say 1080, apparently. Um, I would not worry, uh, Was, about up, uh, optimizing on UE4, UE5 yet. I'm going to tell you, just from what I've seen of UE5 so far, it isn't designed to be optimized yet. It's designed to show people what they can do with it and how far they can go with it. Um, it is definitely not optimized, but I will say again, the shadow features, the, sh the, the virtual shadows, I actually like, like that, that shadow there, the fact that we can see the individual leaves, like there's the one that's more prickly so we can see that one, like, or, like that, that is sexy. Um, but there are clearly issues with UE5. <laughs> B.1 FPS on your 1060. Yeah, this is running, but the, the rendering is running mostly on my GPU. I, I can, my GPU fans are, are going into overhaul. I'm not sure if you can hear them like puffing in the background, but yeah, they're definitely. And again, the, the light scattering on the trees is much more realistic. And it's, I will say the trees are gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. The trees are, are gorgeous. Uh, it's new to UE5. Some of the components that you have to use, like the distance field mesh, are a new feature to um, later editions of UE4. But are not... Um, aren't the full shadow effect here. Lumen and the virtual shadows are UE5. Let me get my camera back on. Sorry, give me a second. All right, we're going to just speed this up again because I want to see how the shadowing plays at nighttime. So I'm just going to let my day night cycle go. Again, those shadows, oh, those shadows are sexy.
Uh, cinematic quality renders differently, though. And yeah, UE, as I said, was, uh, was 7 UE5 is not optimized yet. It is definitely, definitely not optimized yet. Like, there are... Yeah, you do need a lot of VRAM. I, if I remember correctly, let me just get the product window back open. Uh, it recommends at least 8 gigabytes of VRAM. My sphere uh, reflections are still messing a bit with the, the lighting. I mean, these aren't the best textures. I mean, they're pretty good, but uh, they're not the best textures out there. All right. Let's see if we still have the light bleed issue we were having earlier. I could have just done the control L method in the editor, but this is prettier. I do like how the sun, oh, that was an interesting shift in the lighting. I'm not sure if you saw what's happening up there and what's happening down here as well in the water. There we go. This is the lighting we should be getting. It should be this dark. Star map is moving differently than it was before, but okay. Okay, so we, we have to have Lumen on for our light maps to update correctly. I'm just going to hit F11 for a second and go into uh, possess mode here. And then I'm going to hit F2 to turn off our lighting. Just going to apparently get stuck on a physics glitch in there. Hit F3. Let's just equip that for a second. And uh, there we go. Let's go back to full screen. And there is our nighttime setting. without any ambient light. I am hovering around 30 to 40 frames. I've just dropped under 30 as I said that. You can still see there's that UI issue for some reason. I gotta say the lighting, honestly, even with this point light that I'm using with an IES profile is so much better than it was before. Without motion blur, however, it is a bit off. So I will say I mean, if they can fix that motion blur issue, whatever is causing that, this is going to be a very, very pretty engine to work with. Like, this is, yeah. Uh, ignore the fact that that cube map for the stars is pretty crappy. You can see the corners of it, by the way. But yeah, this is, this is surprisingly sexy. That's a big tree. That's a big pixelated star over there. So yeah, the lighting profiles, the lumen stuff is all really rather... Oh, God. Oh, I'm probably going to die, so what else? I mean, the lighting does work so... Oh, my God. I like how that, that, that the shadows of the lights are just a little bit more realistic. Um... Oh yeah, no. Uh, the stars actually do actually the stars do actually add light. You just can't see how much like because there are still issues in in here. Um, like the clouds not working correctly. Um, I'm gonna tell you that the Q map isn't working correctly. Like that's not the Q map is pretty pixelated. Again, it's a free Q map I put together for a tutorial, so it's yeah, it's not gonna be the best thing in the world. Um, but it's to show you how to in the tutorial this is from because this is a tutorial project we're looking at. Um, 
it, 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 yeah, it does not show you how the code works. You can use your own damn cube maps. Um, but I will say the stars actually do shine a tiny bit and do add light. Um, with the lumen settings and the virtual shadow settings, one of them is changing how... Um, oh, no, it did seem pitch black. It was pitch black. Um, in the actual project file, not in the UE5 version of it, in the UE4 version, the stars do add illumination. And when the, there are clouds in the sky at night, the clouds actually go emissive. Um, otherwise, they are just these weird pitch black things and they don't pick up the light from the stars. So I make them emissive so that it, it shows. Yeah, it's just broken here. Um, actually, you know, I'm not sure if it's broken. I know the clouds are broken because you've seen the clouds. You know the clouds work. I showed you the UE4 version of the clouds. Um, and I'll bring that back over in a moment to show everyone what it looks like in UE4. Um, this is the UE4 version, clearly. You can tell by the editor layout. Um, what was I going to say? The, the, I'm not sure if it's the, the same issue of the clouds causing the lighting issues at night or if it's because of the lumen um, global illumination and the new uh, and the, the shadows. But if we go here, I actually meant to hit simulate because I think I have uh, the hunger timer still enabled. And I go to this mode and oh, hit G and I do slow mo 5. I mean, the god rays are coming through because there's more fog here. I turned off the fog in the test, by the way. I mean, you have the individual leaves, but they're nowhere near as detailed. And this is, again, the UE4 version. The trees are moving because there's wind effects, by the way. Another problem with cloud material need to be... Yeah, I same here. I had to have the, um, the uh, default cloud material. Hang on really quickly. Um, in this version, did I disable... No... If there's wind, then the clouds should be working. Where are my clouds? Give me a second. I'm just going to go back to slow mo one. And I'm going to just uh, go over to my dynamic weather system that I've created for the tutorial series. Actors, weather system. Uh, everything plugged in. So I'm just going to this the other window so I can actually make sure that it's doing what I want it to do. Oh, I can't do that uh, in this version. I mean, uh, you know what? Hang on. We're going to just do this differently. Uh, core, character, first person character, uh, b -b 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 hunger system. Let's just do that. Actually, no, undo that. Oh, hey, the hunger system is disabled already. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll do this in the normal version of it. And I'll show you what the clouds will look like in the normal version. Let's go full screen. I really need to turn the physics off on that thing. Uh, I know it's still stretched and looks alien here, but you can tell that the menus are more set up. So, hey, there are my clouds. There is a thing of lightning over there in the distance. PC repair shops uh, been extra busy since they re this uh, released. Sorry, I got to check. I want to see where that lightning bolt was at. So yeah, there's my volumetric cloud system that I set up for the tutorial. Again, the sounds are a bit iffy, but again, free sounds. Um, I'm not a sound engineer. I literally got uh, from freesounds.org or something like that and edited the uh, clips to be the right length um, for what I wanted. They're not perfect. There are issues. By the way, the lightning and the rain are all uh, Niagara systems. And the sound for the lightning is directional. All right, let's just uh, very quickly change the weather. 
So the reason why I jump like that is I, I reset the weather system. I have a debugger still active that allows me to do things like that. So it does jump sometimes. You can see the clouds dissipating. They're still actually there. They're not gonna fully dissipate. We're gonna have a cloudy day. And now I'm just gonna do slow-mo 500. Probably get another weather effect because it changes weather technically every four hours in game, which is roughly every 15, oh wait, no. Uh, four hours in game should be, uh, so 15 minutes is eight hours. 15 minutes is eight hours, so it should be every seven and a half minutes we get a new weather effect. As you can tell, we just got another new weather effect. The fog has picked up, less clouds. Um, is there heat lightning with the clouds? No, I, that is something I, I thought about adding into the tutorial, but I decided not to. It is actually uh, not that hard to add in. Once you work out how the cloud, how the lightning system itself works, all you have to do is just change where the end of the lightning is, and it would actually resolve that issue. Uh, we have another weather system coming in. I'm just going to go back to slow-mo one here, and I'm going to change our weather because I want a bit of cloud to show up. There we go. Sun hasn't set. It's just behind the cloud. I don't want a storm. All right, as long as we have opening there, you can see the clouds will get emissive. It's just uh, up to slow-mo 500. So you can see the clouds are actually starting to get emissive. Of course, now you can't see it because uh, the rain's in the way. There we go. You there can see the emissiveness of the clouds and the lightning. Um, it is darker than it should be, actually. Oh, because the clouds have dissipated completely. There we go. And I'm also standing against a wall. And it's foggy. That's the other reason for it being so weird. Um, apparently the fog messes with the cloud's emission. I did not know that. I did not know that. I will have to update that in the tutorial. But you can see when there wasn't fog, that the clouds get emissive. Um, and it actually adds lighting to the island. The stars do as well when there isn't fog. I didn't know the fog was doing that. That, that. That's actually kind of important to know, I guess. I did not see that when I was doing my earlier test while recording that tutorial series. But yeah, I will say the shadows are much crisper with this. Like, they are clearly crisper. Yeah, we got the individual leaves in UE25 or 26, UE4 26. But in UE5, with our virtual... Uh, shadow maps and our lumen it is the lighting is more realistic it, it definitely is um by the way because i haven't done this yet if anyone wants to join our discord community i am posting the link in chat and the reason why i am doing this is it's nearing midnight and i have a very long day tomorrow and i haven't had dinner yet so I am I'm probably going to, unless there's any final questions, I'm going to bid you farewell for now, and I will start recording introductions to um, UE5. I'll do something probably on the layout. I'll do a little bit more detail on uh, Lumen and around the Nanite and Virtual Shadows. Um, I'll talk about migration a bit. And I will look at the audio features and the new physics features like the chaos engine and how best to use that as well as the asynchronous or async tick physics. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I am actually, I've been dragging for a bit. Um, by the way, I didn't welcome you in, um, uh, in, how do you, what does that actually say? Sorry, the mic is in the way. Give me a second. Blue thumb, uh, button Eck. Uh, welcome in. And again, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for sitting with me while we had dealt with the hour long of why is UE5 crashing? Um, I will also look into why, for some reason, the bridge isn't working. So if anyone else runs into that issue, I can give further feedback. Um, 
Arash, uh, I likely will not be able to stream for a little bit. I I have a funeral that I need to attend, and that's going to be taking me away. I will be starting to release the UE4 survival series shortly. Um, I'm going to be releasing it a little bit earlier than I intended. Uh, UE5 coming out has, has pushed my um, pushed me to release it a bit early. Um, yeah, I've only I recorded all the way through the dynamic weather system, which is 71 tutorial videos right now. But I think I've only posted video 23 for my Patreon supporters. Um, but yeah, I will be doing. I'll be releasing videos more regularly. I finished rebuilding the RTS project. Uh, it, the corruption on that wasn't too bad. Um, I will be getting back to finishing that series out. It is nearly done for what I wanted to do in the main series. I will then start recording the side series for that. So like how to do roads, how to do walls, um, do a little bit more on custom things like ships on water. In fact, I've already started working out how to do a custom movement controller for that. So we will be introducing that in the side series. And at some point, I will start the remastering of the series. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to wait for UE5 to come out before I do the remaster and show you how to do an RTS in UE5. Um, or if I'm going to just do it in UE4. Um, that really kind of depends on all the other series I have planned. I am going to try to come back more regularly and do things more regularly. The C++ series, both C++ series, the RTS one and the uh, learning uh, C++ by making games series will be become active again. Um, honestly, it wasn't that, like, once I worked out some of the more, um, I honestly wasn't that hard once I worked, like, the harder part of working that out is actually working out like the coasting of the ship more than anything for realistic motion. Um, and getting like right now I need, I, it isn't quite right what I've done. If I want a ship wants to turn the way I've set it up is the ship stops moving forward. Like it comes to a halt and then it slowly starts to turn while moving. Um, so it, it, there are some things that need to be worked out. Um, but, I, I want to get the, the movement sort of natural looking for each stage. And now what I'm doing with that, uh, and I will be working that on that probably over the next week while I'm doing stuff for the funeral is, um, or, or yeah, is um, actually working out the kinks in that. So I can do the side series on it. Um, the AI series, I'm, I'm torn on restarting that one. Um, I really do want to get my A star and nav mesh video out for that, which was actually what I was in the middle of editing when all of these things happened. Um, yeah, it's an anchor down motion really kind of is. Um, but that, that will, that will come with time if I'm going to restart that one or not. Um, all of that said, again, I want to thank you all for being here and thank you for your support. It is really lovely to be able to talk to you guys in real time. Um, we've been doing this for what? A little bit over four hours now, probably like five hours. Um, five hours and 30 seconds, by the way. Um, so again, thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking out this long through just dealing with a new engine and looking at everything. Um, there are team-based AI, by the way. Um, allies, I will not be covering directly in the series. I will be doing that in the side series. Um, it's literally just adding in one extra node um, or one extra variable. And then actually, technically you could do it as two variables. There's a few options, but I will be covering that in the side series. But the main series is going to be a two team player versus uh, AI setup um, that is meant to be expanded from. It's meant to show you the logic. But so long as you know how to set up the teams and I kind of show you in the series how to do it, um, it it's not that hard. It, it, it's, actually, what I would do is I would take what I have in the series, add in the bool that I'll sum up I said one variable, um, and create a structure, actually create a structure with a bool in it using the enum that's currently in the series. Uh, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be showing that in the side series because the main series, I just want to get the main logic and teach people that main logic. But I will be covering that. That is something that's on my list of things. Um, again, thank you all for your support. I want to thank my Patreon supporters. So again, Rian, who made the icons for this and who spent four hours with me trying to figure out what the heck was going on with my water. Um... I did play a bit with the Chaos Engine earlier, by the way. Um, you know, uh, Hanas, who's been just 
a great person to talk to about things. Um, wow, I'm blanking on on my my supporters currently. Um, I am clearly really tired. Oh, sorry about that. Um, who I said? I said Rian. I said Hanas. Um, why am I? Connor. I knew there was one I was forgetting. Um, and um, one Vault Ten. Um, so again, I want to thank all of them for their support. Uh, and their understanding. And of course, they're they're getting the the Patreon videos early. So are the other Patreons, but yeah. Uh, all of that said, uh, again, you know, welcome for uh, thank you for asking questions. Thank you for interacting. Uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm not sure why it's flickering so much. Uh, I've posted the Discord link one more time in chat. You know, you can also find the Discord link on the bottom of almost all my videos. I didn't include it here for some reason because I wasn't thinking. But you know, if you have more questions, if you're curious about unreal we have a very open friendly community feel free to join us um you're more than welcome and all of that said as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial next live stream on discord what have you and i hope that you have a wonderful day <laughs>